Hey everybody, happy Friday out there. Welcome to another edition of Wrestling Remembered. I'm your host and producer, Joe Wooday Lowry, and this week we are talking wrestling's most memorable voices. And, you know, they can range anywhere from ring announcers to TV hosts, even wrestlers themselves. But one thing they do have in common is when you heard their voices, you knew exactly who they were and where you were probably as well. So, but first, with always, are my esteemed colleagues. We are minus one today. We'll get to that in a second. First up, though, he is my brother from another mother, the Poet Laureate of Monty and the Pharaoh Channel, who is fresh off a heartbreaking loss of his beloved Da 30 yeah. title last night. Let's welcome yeah. back the player, Mr. Benny Scala. Welcome, Benny. Thank you. Remember, <laughs> look out for number one, but don't step in number two. Ooh, <laughs> always quick with that. Always quick with that. And next up, he hails from the great state of Massachusetts. You can call him anything, but do not call him late for dinner. He's the man, the myth, the legend. Let's welcome the president of Thursday nights, Mr. Phil DeCesare. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to Wrestling Remembered. And yes, as evidenced by my eating on air the other night, don't call <laughs> me late for dinner. Man, I feel like I just, two great, I like I just great got wrestling off voices right on this show. <laughs> I feel like I just got off the air. That was like the longest show last night. Over yeah, I'll tell you. It was a marathon. Over yeah. Three hours. I, I, that was I like a 22 know. inning baseball game. We are Iron Men. Yeah. Yes. That is, and so was the, the people in the chat joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Looks like we got a lot of Jason, Ja, Will, uh, Beth, Maria. Everybody's in the house tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell all your friends, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video, do whatever you got to do. Happy Get Friday. Word out. Get the word out that Wrestling Remembered is on the air. All right, let's talk wrestling's most memorable voices. Um, I came up with this topic really off the top of my head because great topic though. When I it think about it, um, back you know becoming a fan, you know the voices I heard were just so you could just tell who they were. Whether yeah. it was Vince McMahon, whether it was um, oh god, Pat Patterson, Bruno San Martino, and of course. Uh, Let's see if you guys remember this guy. This doctor in attendance at ringside, Dr. George Soharian, the timekeeper at the bell, Mike Mitten, and the referees for this hour of wrestling, Dick Worley, Danny Davis, Dick Crow, Billy Caputo, and the My Name is Jericho. Yep, there you go. What do you guys think of that one? Huh? I'll tell you <laughs> what. When I the minute I heard, oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, everything for the next hour in my world was perfect. Yeah, there could be there could be a nuclear holocaust. Absolutely, outside my home, I didn't wow. give a crap. I, I was I was I was locked in for the next hour. His his voice just you know we're creatures of habit, and sure, the, sure. his voice was very reassuring. I just knew that for the next hour. I was going to watch wrestling, and all was well in my world. It was right. Saturday morning. It was 11 a.m. on Channel 56, and yeah, it was Joe McHugh. Yeah. The way he would roll those syllables off the tongue, amazing. Was just, I was just always shocked that, I mean, he every week, you it, it became hypnotic. You knew what he was saying. You understood it. You uh, memorized it. I would go to school saying that. Doctor in the, <laughs> I, 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 I would who, memorize the roll call, too. Yes. I didn't know, didn't oh. know how to spell it, but I knew how to pronounce it. Dr. George Saharian, <laughs> yeah. you know, time he grabbed the bell, Charlie Daniels, whoever it was at the time. But Executive um, Francis Walker. Yeah. Big, my big Lord. You know, but it, it, it lent a, a, you know, some authenticity. Like, yes, this state athletic. Commission, <laughs> the athletic talking about athletic. here. So, you, know, you know, it's legit, right? Yeah, yeah. Athletic exactly. Commission. And it looks like someone's backstage. I'm gonna see when they're ready. We got a surprise guest coming on. Uh -oh. here. Uh -oh. Everybody, on. yep. And uh, let's bring him on right now. We have a, 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 a. I feel like we just left this guy. Everybody, let's welcome to the stage here. There he is. Who that? Jimmy Farrell in the hey. house. Farrell, Esquire. What up? What yeah. Esquire? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I wasn't sure I'd be able to get in and stuff. I, I tried calling Betty. Like, you know, I didn't even realize that this was happening right this second. I basically just got home from work. Oh, I, was I was multitasking at work. I'm doing a live auction selling sports cards and coins, and I'm oh listening to the Chuck Palumbo thing simultaneously. They asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm multitasking. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So so I, I walk in the door, and I just got a phone call from, uh, you know, Wahoo's son, Zach. 
And oh, wow. I'm trying to see if Zach is coming by, too. So you might have Zach McDaniel coming on, too. So nice. we're going to try all to see if you can pull all of this craziness off here. But uh, nice. I had just sent you a text, Phil. I was like, have Joe oh. get me in. I was like, <laughs> okay. You pop Hi, by. everybody. How are you? All right. We're good. Happy Friday. Happy yeah. Friday. Oh, great. What a day. What a day. What a day. What a night last night. Huh? Over three hours of just reckless banter. And uh, I got to tell you, that was the longest time I've sat in this chair. Three That's straight great. hours. Guys, just for a second, Karen, say hi. Ka Karen, what are you doing down there? Karen, what's Ooh. Karen doing down there? <laughs> yeah, really? What are you about? Karen, a little wow. higher, Karen. Oh, a little higher. Karen's a little setting higher, up the lights Karen. over here. Notice my lights oh, go yeah, blue, sure. Joe. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> hey, Karen, how are you? Yeah, typical me just being in a ham and hamming it up. I'm like, Karen, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Karen, thank you very much. Let me, let me tell you something. If it wasn't for Karen, you guys wouldn't see me at all. Karen Karen sets me up and, and does all the uh, the production work. She's uh, Wait a minute. She's my Abe? Ooh, boy, there you go. If this is my if this is my Abe, boy, do I got it made. Anyway. She's your, she's your Karen. She's, she's your, your Karen. babe, not your Abe. Joe, right, what do you, exactly. Joe? What do you, what do you call your other half? What, do, what, what do you call her? You got a nickname for your other half, baby Joe? Baby cakes. She's my baby. Cakes. Baby, look at this. Karen baby knows cakes. this. Karen's like baby cakes. I'm like, okay, yeah, baby thank cakes. you, baby she's in there. cakes. She's in the chat somewhere. She's up. Joe Myers, aka Baby Cakes. That's right. There we go. There we <laughs> go. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, hon. All so right. We are. We're uh, Jimmy. We're talking wrestling's most memorable voices tonight. I'm sure you uh, know of a few. I just All paid right. uh, the um, popular one, Joe McHugh, ring announcer for WWF for many years. Doctor in attendance, Dr. George Sohadian, timekeeper at the <laughs> bell. You remember him, right? And I'm your ring announcer, Joe McHugh. There you yeah. go. There you go. You know, I, did you ever notice, though, poor Joe and poor Gary a lot? Well, Joe later on got cheers, but, man, Gary used to get booed. Nobody I'm else. your ring announcer, Gary, Gary. Michael Campana, and everybody yeah. be like, "Boo!" I'm like, "Why the hell are you booing him? He's great." Yeah. And then George cool. Steele used to chase him. George right. Steele, yeah, Jimmy and, Snooker, the, and Snooker to, too. Yeah, yeah, he right. his uh, his uh, boutonniere every week. Yeah, yeah. he used to right. run around right. and run away from. Him. You know, it's funny. I was looking up old announcers all stuff. Do you guys realize Steve Allen was considered the yes. first television host? Yes, the Back Tonight in, Show, Steve Allen. Yep, 1949. He answered an ad uh, in a newspaper bag, uh, newspaper, asking for wrestling announcers, and he came on, and uh, they gave him the gig, and he yes. kicked it off in 1949 when Studio Wrestling was a big deal. But yeah, yep. it was pretty good to see that Steve Allen, 1949. I recall he hosted a an NBC kind of. It was like one of those Saturday afternoon specials, just on the history of wrestling. So right. he was the host, the moderator, and, uh, you know, he, he really had a lot of knowledge. It was very cool. Yeah. Yeah, Again, this is the guy who was at one time the host of The Tonight Show. I mean, sure. yeah. no right. small job, right. you know? Did he, right. did he get you know, that have... job? Didn't he run, uh, accidentally fall into that job? Didn't somebody get sick <laughs> or something like that and he filled in? or something? Jack, uh, did, uh, did it go from Jack Parr to like Steve that, yeah. Allen, perhaps? Mm -hmm. I think he before, was. Just, and then Johnny? Yeah, he just Very happened well. to be in the right spot at the right time, and uh, they gave him the gig. So, yeah. I, I totally forgot. Jimmy Lennon Jr., uh, senior. Yes. Blassie, yeah, Blassie, Blassie. Blassie. Okay. There you go. There's Blassie. Yep. Uh, the Olympic. He, that was what? That was a guy that um, I I R I nine five one seven one. I think was yeah, the phone number. Like <laughs> wasn't that yeah. wasn't that the days with Johnny Red Shoes Dugan as the referee over in that Olympic order? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, Java yeah. Rook and uh, John. Of course, John Tolos. Can't forget John Tolos, right, Jimmy? Yeah, you want – oh, John Tolo should be in the Hall of Fame. Rah, he should John be. John Tolo should have his own Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's I have such fond memories of the Olympic Auditorium, uh, you know, because in, in our area, Benny, you probably remember because you were out here back in the day – well, out right. here, wait a minute, in New York. You know, back in the day, I used to watch it on UHF, Patterson, New Jersey, Channel, Channel 41, 47, WXTV. 47 Correct. and 41 both had Lucha Libre de Lucha, Profesional. Exactly. You know, and, and and I used to go to my grandpa's house, and and he lived in Sheepshead Bay, and it was on Saturdays, from what I remember, sure. and, and we used to watch it on the UHF, and it was such a great memory, and wow. I love the Olympic wrestling. The, it was the only problem is I got addicted to, to Goya Foods. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> was that one of the I sponsors? The only problem is I got addicted to Goya Foods. All oh, the yeah. commercials were Goya Foods. <laughs> yeah, well, I refused. I refused to eat anything as a kid. My mother took me to the doctor, and the doctor said, "No, no, no kid ever voluntarily starved himself to death. You, Don't you worry, please." 
So I wasn't going for Goya. I wasn't even going for Nathan's. I was impossible in the early days. Nathan's. Nathan's. I got a great name that nobody would really associate with professional wrestling. What's that? And that is Joe Garagiola. Yes. The baseball who actually. St. Louis, right? Sam Muchnick in St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. He actually yeah, you was know, part of that NBC uh, piece back in like the 84, 85 when they did a story on that's, wrestling. He was part of that Steve Allen thing, I think. Yeah, actually, Joe so. yeah, yeah. He and also he, bore a remarkable resemblance to Vern Gagne, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They actually they did a side-by-side before, and, and they <laughs> right. both remarkably similar. That's he like Eric Sims and Bob Geigel. Yeah, well, yeah. personally, I, I personally, I think that an I think that an egg bears an amazing resemblance to Vern Gagne. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. You know, I think I you're mean, right, you know, Jimmy. Just put a little hair on the sides of the egg, and there you go. Yeah, you you draw a smile on it, and there it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, and you know, speaking of St. Louis wrestling, if I may, for a moment, we were talking yeah, about right. announcers and actually okay. people who bear resemblances yeah. to one another. Uh, Larry Matezik, I believe, is uh, yes. the name of the man. Great he. Man. He looked like Vince. He had he bore a resemblance to Vince McMahon back in the day. They they really looked similar, but uh, both that were actually announcers right at Vince the same McMahon. time. Yes, wow. The the first voice I ever heard oh, in yeah, wrestling. I told you, hey Jimmy, I ever tell you my story about how I became a wrestling fan? Did I ever tell you the story? Well, I know who you went to school with, but you might as well tell me this no, story. No, that was high school. It was uh, <laughs> the sum, the summer of eighty one. A neighbor of mine said um, he had a paper route. And he said, can you do my paper route for a couple of weeks while, I, while they go down the Cape or whatever? And I said, like, sure, I'll do it. So I'm doing the paper route. You know, on Fridays, you have to, Fridays, you have to collect money for the paper. You know, you go around right. on the paper route and you get money. Sure. But I, this sure. one lady said, come back on Saturday. So I came back. It was an older lady. I came back on a Saturday morning. It was like around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. And I knock on the door and she opens the door. And it, and it was summertime. The screen door was open. And I hear this ruckus coming out of her her. Uh, Living room, and I'm like, "What is?" I was going just on? outside, and I thought I heard a ruckus. Yeah, a you ruckus. Describe the ruckus? <laughs> you described the ruckus. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I asked her, "I go, what are you watching on TV?" And she goes, "That Saturday morning wrestling." And I ran there back home. I asked her there what channel go. was. I ran back home, and I was hooked right then and there. And all I remember is the Moon Dogs, Tony Guerrero, everybody running around the ring, Lou Albano, Vince McMahon screaming, Patterson screaming, and I was hooked. My Saturdays changed forever, and Ab- you know, absolutely, and I that's when I got my. Friend. It took me forever to figure out that Joe McHugh was real. Was Joe McHugh? That's how you spelled it. I thought it was like McCool because he right. kept calling McHugh, and I'm like, right. What's his name again? Right. I thought it was I mean, Jim first, Jim yeah, McCool. But yeah. one of the you greatest, know? one of my greatest memories of pro wrestling was is when my parents finally, finally yeah. let me have a, a TV in my room. Oh yeah, because yeah. I could. I was oh, yeah. I was always being told you're you're too young you can't stay yep. up late for Saturday yep. Night Live yep. you can't stay up late for this you can't stay up late for that and finally I got a little black and white in my room yep. and I beelined for twelve o'clock midnight on Saturday nights because I had only heard about championship wrestling I could only catch all star wrestling yep. oh, yes, in New York yep. which in New York was put on UHF stations we had a, a Long yep. Island station Benny probably remembers it Benny uh, channel 67 in Smithtown oh yeah absolutely oh, wow. this wow. is where I got to see Gary Michael Capetta but I always wondered about the other show I was like the other show yep. seems like it's even bigger than right. all star yeah. wrestling and it was oh, yeah. it was it was wrestling. the main it was the main program uh, wrestling is the number one reason why I got a TV in my bedroom because when cable rolled down my street in 1982 and I told my father, now I can watch Georgia wrestling, world-class wrestling. He's like, oh, no, you don't. You're not hijacking the TV on me now. And I got a TV right. in my room, and I was that was it for me. That's so funny. We all have the same story. I, Christmas 1967, I got a 12-inch, I think it was 12-inch, whatever the smallest one was, a Hitachi, That's black and white. Think. <laughs> which I brought up to my room because then, you know, I didn't hog the TV for sports. And that's actually where I discovered uh, wrestling on Channel 47 on yeah. Saturday nights. Right. Yeah. I got a, I got a 12 inch right now. Oh, wait. We're talking oh. about TVs. Whoa, whoa, oh. whoa. <laughs> Where's Karen? I don't see Karen in the picture. Where is she? Um, She went out to, she went out to scoop up. But um, yeah, I mean, when I got you- cable, when I got cable, I, I was WOR show championship wrestling at midnight. I used to get that yeah. out of New York, even though I'm in Boston. Yeah. PIX, I think it was, was there another channel? PIX right. out of New York, or somebody had it. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard of that. Yeah. Same championship wrestling three times in a row on the same Saturday. 
So if well, I really miss something without taping it, I can go back and watch it. So speaking right. of late nights, if we were to fast forward 15 years from that time, Joe, sure. uh, I was awakened one Saturday night by a group of friends who decided to wake me up because I hadn't gone out. So <laughs> got up, cracked open some beers, turned on the TV. ECW. Oh, geez. ECW. Oh, it's a crazy time slot. Two I knew oh. of it. I received the. Ta- I got the bootleg tapes from my friend in Connecticut who worked oh, yeah. for Titan. It was all underground I, back then. It was underground. Shit it back. was, but I was hooked. And needless to say, yep. Saturday nights, appointment TV, one o'clock on the Spanish channel in Worcester. Of course, yeah, they ECW. Had yeah. Yep. Brought yeah. to you by the great Joey Styles. Yep. Joey yeah. Styles. Joey yeah. Styles. Yeah. Is, he is in a world unto himself. He put Francie through the table. That's jo- all Joey, the screaming. The, like, fact, oh my God. the fact that Joey Styles did it all by himself most oh, of the yeah. time. Yeah. He, he did. Yeah. We he saw kidding. him. Yeah, he we saw him in Webster, Massachusetts. He actually Webster, came. Wow. Um, it was Turn their the first, mic. I think, one of their first cards in Massachusetts. Yeah. And they recorded th- I, a few weeks' worth of shows there. And Joey was the announcer. And oh, wow. we, we actually got to meet him. And uh, just a fantastic guy, you know? Yeah. My first yeah, well, show, my, shirt, my first ECW was in Fall River, and Sabu landed on my lap. And I'm like, I love this shit. Yeah. This yeah. Great. Tommy Rich oh, yeah. bleeding all over the place. You went home with Tommy Rich's blood all over you and little. You got, you're, you're a blood. You're a blood hunter. Never I mind know, that guy I, up in Canada, blood. man. I, blood, you know, geez, I know. Don't we all? Too. How can you not love blood? You know. Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> Happiness is getting stoned with Tommy Rich. Let me tell you. Oh, geez. oh, I am. Wow. I'm very oh, envious. Man. Tommy is a dude. I love yeah. Tommy Rich. I, every time I see him, it's like Wildfire. we like we we never missed a beat. Tommy Rich is a great guy, yeah. man. He I love to meet Tommy. Yeah. Very what cool. You, you, wouldn't, about- you wouldn't be disappointed. Yeah. Now, uh, Phil, you had mentioned the guy, Lord James Blairs. He had yes. a, a, a kind of an iconic voice. Tally ho. Tally ho. Yeah. Lord, Lord James Blairs was an amazing, not only was he a great uh, announcer, commentator, but just an right. amazing man, you know, and I've known of his history for a long time. Uh, during WW2, he was aboard. Um, yeah. The Japanese actually uh, torpedoed the merchant ship that he was on. It was, I think it was wow. a Dutch ship. Wow. And um, they took everyone um, prisoner and wow. executed most of them, beheaded most of them. But Lord Blears was uh, a, a swimmer since he could, you know, since he could crawl, yeah. ultimately actually became an Olympic swimmer too, uh, was able to escape the camp and swim to safety and he was picked up by, um, I, I think, uh, the British. And uh, wow. he hadn't eaten in weeks, and they gave him a can of peaches. So every year at the time of his rescue, on the anniversary, he would eat a can of peaches. But he was just an amazing guy. Um, obviously, we know him from Hawaii. We know him from the AWA in our in our in in terms yeah. of our yes. timeline. Referee, yeah. right? Yeah. We, he, well, he was a special referee. He did referee Hogan and Bockwinkel. And Bockwinkel. That big yeah. Match. Yep. Yep. yeah. That was that mayhem match, right? When chaos after the match, when Hogan yes, that won been... it, didn't win it. Yep, yeah, Lord top rope, Lord James players reversed it. Oh yeah, yes, boy, he was, did. Boy, was I angry about that, and I didn't oh, yeah. even get to—I didn't even get to see it. You know, I was reading about it in the mags at the time. Yep. I didn't yep. have access. You know, I, Benny, I don't know how much you remember about uh, Lord James Blears. I—I I had no access to him, so I can't really offer up much. You know what I mean? We saw him on AWA, Jimmy, uh, back in the day on ESPN. Okay. He and Rod okay. Trongard were. Hey, Dave, uh, okay. From the mid '80s, we yeah. we we right. heard him, and right. um, just an amazing guy. I know he worked in Hawaii for many years, and he was the right. guy who sent a lot of the American. He, he's the guy who sent the Bulldogs to Japan first, so he was very oh, wow. instrumental in bringing a lot of the Americans, the guy, right. uh, what they call him, the Gaijin, over um, right. to work Japan. Right. And uh, just uh, in the surfing community, he's very well known. His daughter was a surfer. He was mm. a great surfer. In yeah. fact, mm. they called him the voice of surfing in Hawaii because he just had a he just had a, a, a manner of speaking of of just enlivening right. the action for everybody. So yeah. wrestling, surfing, every you know, very transcendent. Great, great guy. Not often th- not often thought of when it comes All to right. wrestling and All right, hold on. Time out. What do you got? Time out. Time out, <laughs> Joe. Joe. Yes. Yes, I know yes. You're, dri- you're I know you're driving the bus tonight, but you got to do me a favor because my lovely other half just informed me that in the corner it yeah. says that my name is Karen. Yeah. 
You have to, you can't, you can't. Well, oh, I just it. noticed that. Yeah. You have to change it. You can change it up right now. You should be able to change it. Karen! Hold on. Hold on. Hey, Hold on. Karen! Joe, Hold do you on. remember those commercials hey, for the Boston hey, Science hey, Museum? Jimmy, what, you, Jimmy, what do you want it to say? What do you want it to say? Uh, I, well, I don't want it to say Not asshole. Karen. I'll, we can start with say, that. But you want to call you Jimmy, or what do you want to call? What do you want to well, be? What are you talking about? We can call me the Pharaoh. I think that's what I was. Pharaoh. All right, we'll do that. The Pharaoh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe, can you fix that? Yep, I'm, have to fix I'm fixing it? it right now. Oh, okay. All you. right. You know, otherwise I, I, I could act. I could act like I'm you know, multitasking. Okay. Very good. Now, Joe, hey. I know you're driving the bus tonight, so I want to make sure I don't jump way ahead with announcers and stuff like that. No, I'm all, I, got, I got tons of graphics, so hopefully I'll, okay. I'll have some. Uh, you know, you threw up Vince McMahon before, and I know no. I've, I'm on record anyway for saying this, but I sure. think that Vince McMahon was a wonderful announcer. He was. All right? <laughs> He was he was solid. He was solid. He worked he was, well with everybody. With great Antonio, straight man. Antonio great Rocca, straight man. Bruno yep. Patterson. He worked great with all of them. Any yep. non any non wrestling fan will turn on wrestling and they'll hear Vince's voice. They'll know Vince just from that. And the interviews. They don't need to see his face. They, they don't need Joe to see his face. They don't need nothing. <laughs> I fixed it, Karen. Karen, Karen, Karen we're all set, Karen. We got it. <laughs> we got. Thank you. We got it. Oh, thank you. She says I look very cute as a Karen. There we go. Oh, okay. There you go. So uh, oh Mike Mon Mike Monty chimed in and said that his story about uh, watching wrestling was he was watching scrambled porn and then his mom walked in the room and he had to change it and stupid wrestling was on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, okay. I remember those days too. And right Mike, now Mike, thought, Mike thought the porn. Valiants were girls. Oh, did you really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Mike, the first time I think he told me he tuned into wrestling was before he met me, and it was just a brief yep. glimpse at it, and he thought the Valiants were chicks. I can't say I blame him. I mean, yep. what the, you know. Um, one of my favorite announcers, I always talk about him. He's the dean of professional wrestling, Gordon Foley. Oh, uh, this, yes. this guy, this guy yeah. educated me when I got cable, and I was able to uh, watch Georgia Championship Wrestling and then World Championship Wrestling. I mean, that guy just told me, he, I learned how to say souple. For Absolutely. Man, and, uh, you know, Gut wrench salto. I never oh, yeah. heard of a gut right. wrench salto before then. And then, well, and then uh, Gorilla Monsoon with the gluteus maximus comments and all that other stuff. And you know, <laughs> yep. you got yeah. occipital protuberance. Hey, yeah. you, li you literally got a uh, an anatomy lesson of the human body um, yep. every time you watch these guys. And yep. you know, who says wrestling is stupid? You 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 were very well educated after you watched a few matches. You knew exactly what was going. Solar plexus. What's that? I'll show you. I'll show <laughs> right. you what it is. You know. So right. You gotta love right. it. But he would Vince do an gets... interview like uh, at his desk with like a, a Harley Race or, or a Jack Briscoe. Oh, oh yeah. And it, I mean, like they they were breaking down a match. And I'm telling you, yeah. you would think they were breaking down the World Series. Oh yeah. That's right. how that's right. how authentic he made it sound. Loved it. Very Loved clinical. It. Very Loved yeah. It. And tell me what you were thinking here. What did you want to do when this happened? And they're like, oh my God, this guy's really going through the whole script here. This is pretty good. You gotta love it. I love that. I love that stuff. What about Howard Finkel? Howard Finkel, Madison Square guy. What do you guys think of him? The voice of MSG. What, what a booming, booming yeah. voice. You know, it's amazing when you when like let's say you didn't know what Howard Finkel looked like and you heard sure. that voice. Yeah. That's the voice of like wrestling god it's just yeah. like oh my god and then all of a sudden you see howard yeah. and it's it's almost like ronnie james dio if anybody's familiar <laughs> yes. with us. You know, james. When, you, when you see ronnie james dio he was this tiny little man but little this squirt of a guy was, this Boom. voice was like kaboom you know yeah. amazing amazing uh, you know? baby cakes baby cakes loves ronnie james dio loves oh him. right ronnie was the best and i heard he was a really good man more importantly you know everything yeah. i've ever heard about ronnie james dio was is he was a sweetheart you yeah. know and i don't use that normally for for guys but it sure sounds like ronnie james dio was 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 pretty much as pure as you're going to get and uh i wanted to say uh quickly too that sure. gordon gordon Soli. yeah is the greatest all right i just want to i want to get that in if i have to start ranking these maybe we'll do that later in the program but right gordon Soli is the greatest announcer ever as yep. far as i'm concerned he's the measuring stick for the every dean. announcer, the dean of announcers. He, treated like, yeah. he treated it like a sport he, he, he was as as real as it could get he he made you feel like you were watching something a thousand percent genuine and that's oh the greatest oh, credit when he did those press conferences for the big matches down in tampa and they were at the hotel and they were that looks so official to me. Like this guy, this is this is the real deal. Got to be real. Dusty yeah. Rhodes, be real. Punk, all those guys, but Eddie Graham, yep. you know all that yep. stuff. It was like a real 
you know, I, and I think that's probably where Vince kind of got it from too, because it was shortly yeah. thereafter. You got Jack Tunney at a, at a, at a, in a boardroom with Andre and Hogan and all that. And they're trying to do the same thing. And, uh, right. you know, they were, they were ahead of their time with that stuff. Down right. There. No right. Doubt yeah. no doubt you know, I don't know if, I don't know if you have these guys and I don't, I, you know, I gotta be honest. I don't even know their names, but whoever did the announcing in new Japan, I couldn't understand the language. Let's be honest here. But yeah. Even though I couldn't understand a word, the conviction was coming through anyway from the announcers over at New Japan. I was right. just, oh, oh, yeah. You know? And I don't expect you to be able to throw up names and go, oh, well, yeah, that's this guy and this guy. But my God, I mean, they felt real. And I yeah. couldn't even understand a word they were saying. Am I making any sense here? But it was, yeah, yeah. And, Jimmy, and, and even beyond that, the announcers would get excited. And if you watch some of the old tapes of All Japan even and going back yeah. to the early 80s, we know how yeah. quiet and stoic the crowd was, how they would oh, maybe I offer a polite applause or what have you. That. And that. then it evolved into like an ooh kind of right. thing once in a while. Right. But you're right, the right. announcers really were driving that... that um, yep. The yep. action in terms of yep. uh, the and, reaction. And, and to further that, same thing with Lucha Libra. I didn't yeah. know. I couldn't understand the word. It was in Spanish, right, Benny? Oh, yeah. But they were we great. Gotta, I don't want to interrupt the process. We do have a little bit of breaking news here. I, I've just found out. I don't know how old this is, but I'm on the I'm on the sites all day long. Darby Allen has a broken foot. Darby well, he's Allen not going to Mount Everest then. Broke his foot. Um, he is not going to Mount Everest now. He broke three bones in his foot during his match with Jay White the other night. Yeah, uh, he was slated to right. climb Mount Everest. He's now yeah. delayed that until 2025, but now he's got a broken foot. So that's the know. Lord intervening, I think. There, maybe uh, you know, you know, this goes, very, this, this goes to right to very, break. go to ahead, Jimmy. Very, to be very, very serious, I mean, and I, I uh, look, Darby Allen is giving his body and his life up basically for what he loves, and I give he's him a lot of a lot of respect, respect for that. But you know yeah. what, though, Darby Allen's going to have a miserable old age if he gets there. He's, he's going to be in so much. He won't, he, like he won't make it. He won't make it. He won't make it if he keeps this pace. He can't. He's going to. He's going to be in so much pain. And for what? For what? I mean, honestly, for what? You know, yeah. at, that, at that point, you know, there's one thing to love the business. There's another thing to die for it. And and I, I'm concerned about him. I mean, it, it, look, this is the day and age where smaller wrestlers are getting are getting a lot of love, and that's great. But. He's going to wind up really, really miserable. Yeah. I mean, I recently <laughs> heard Mick Foley wants to have one final death match. Are you, yeah. are you out of your mind? What are you He wants doing, to drop Mick? 100 pounds and have a death match. That's his motivation to drop 100 pounds. Just, just, just drop the 100 it. pounds and live a little longer. But You know what the worst part is? And I'm sure you guys will probably agree. There's a whole bunch of people that can't wait for that. What's wrong with you? Yeah. It's, 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 it's all up here, man. They, they, they think they're going to get the Mick Foley from 1995. They're not. They're going to get the Mick Foley now. Who's going to be 60 years old in what another year? This is what his goal is, right? To get back in the ring before he's 60 right. or, or for his 60th birthday. I don't know. You know, right. the only person right. I know that's really going to die in the ring wrestling is going to be Ric Flair. He wants yep. to die in the ring. There's no doubt about it. it, it that's, the place well, he, that's where he gave his life, and that's where he's going to die. So well, it's obviously, a, yeah. obviously, his ego is his own personal cocaine. He's addicted oh, to yeah. himself. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's very, very sad because he should have gone out when Sean kicked him in the face and told him how much he loved him. Yeah. And he had that great requirements. Yeah. That ceremony the next night was one yeah. of the greatest things I've ever seen. Yep. They should have let it end right there. What was yep. that top what was that top gun? Your ego's writing checks that your body can't cash. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's it's yep. so true. It's so true. But anyways, bro, Darby Allen obviously he's going to be out for a while, so I don't know how this affects anything. But yep. oh, well. uh, imagine if Darby were around in the time in ECW days, that would have been something. Be I mean, Darby and Spike Dudley, man, he'd be dead or in a wheelchair. There's no yeah. doubt. You know what though, Paul wouldn't have pushed him. Not a no. lot. No. No. no, but he would have done it anyways. He would have done it for the fans. He would have done it for the right. Fans. Exactly. Um, you know how that goes. And, and for what at the end of the day, and for what at the end of the day, he's going to yeah. have a miserable, miserable time when he gets older. It's not. It's not a good thing. No. So, yeah, I, yeah. I have to bring up another great announcer. Sure, if Gordon go Soley is number one, yeah. Lance yeah. Russell to me has to be number Lance two. Lance Russell, yeah. Okay. Lance, yeah. I can see that. I don't think Memphis wrestling happens if it's not for Lance Russell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I think that's all the, those storylines were, were orchestrated from that you know that little uh, desk he had with Dave Brown, who also yeah. was very under. Underrated, mm -hmm. I think. Well, you gotta. Mm -hmm. I, I think back then the announcers were the selling point of the show, for you know, vocally, um, you know, hearing wise, because you're watching two guys compete 
It's the announcers who have to sell it to everybody at home, not just on the screen. So mm -hmm. you get a guy like Lance Russell and the Gordon Solis and the Vince McMahons, and, you know, it could be the worst match in the world, but their voices are carrying the match. There's no doubt about it. So, And, and there has to be a sane, straight-laced foil to really yeah. accentuate – the oh, yeah. craziness that you're seeing from the performers, you 100 know, hundred percent agree with that. It, it it ups it really ups their uh you know their their craziness quotient by more, you know how more stoic and straight laced and and uh, yeah guys, and uh, normal they are. What do you guys think of uh, this guy? Remember him, Lord Alfred Hayes. Okay, oh, yes. this this guy. Now hold on, this guy's <laughs> the biggest botch master in the history of the of announcing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, you, I watched this guy take a mental fart time and time over again. But here's the weird thing. Why do I still like him? Could you explain yeah. that? Because he's from overseas. <laughs> great wrestler back in the day, too. Thank yeah, you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Ben, Benny, Benny, tell people about what a nasty villain this guy could be in the oh, ring. Oh, my God. I mean, he was, you know, he was Steve Regal before Steve Regal was Steve Regal. Yeah. Yeah. Ju Ju Judo Al, right? Wasn't Judo he uh, Al, yeah. a judo gimmick, too? I think so. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, I mean, he they did. turned him into the, you know, like the, you know, the, the harmless, like English butler kind of guy, but he was right. deadly when he wrestled. Yeah. Right. Right. I'll tell you, he was terrible at improv, though. He could never have put it in. He could have Tuesday never Night Titans. It. Tuesday yeah. Night Titans. Remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah. TNT. Yeah. Remember Lord Alfred was under the sheet on the table? <laughs> yeah. He was, he was the uh, Ed McMahon to Vince McMahon's Johnny Carson on that. Oh, he totally was. That was right. classic right there. That's classic. Another guy that I loved, and who this is synonymous with 80s wrestling, if you were a fan, uh, Bobby Heenan. Oh, my I mean, God. The guy. Great. This guy, I mean, you didn't need a script with this guy. You talk nope. about improv. The alpha and yep. omega and oh, uh, just yep. the everything. Well, I mean, it was great at everything. He was a great wrestler, a great manager, and a great yep. announcer. He was yep. the weasel. He, there was no doubt about it. He played yep. that to a T, whether yep. it was, you know, causing chaos in Bockwinkle's matches or behind yep. the mic. This guy, he, yep. it, it was so sad that, he, you know, he passed and everything, but he just – what a what a what a great guy! What a you know unbelievable his an contribution to the sport, an absolute genius. Yeah, yeah. Absolute I, I want to get back genius. to something Phil said here a moment ago that that was really a good point. I think is that you know like when when Vince would interview Albano and Albano, I mean he was a lunatic. Yeah. But he was more of a lunatic because Vince just stood there deadpan. Oh yeah, you know, yep. with an occasional look of disgust. Yes, <laughs> but it really accentuated Albano's you know uh, lunacy. I, th yeah. I, I, I think the look of disgust on Vince McMahon was like, what part of this do I have to edit out before we take this onto the How air? How much did you drink before you came on the air? <laughs> that too. Yep. Buddy that Rogers is. was not so kind to the captain. I think You're he called a him a piece, Buddy of, Rogers, a piece of disease. He called him, you piece of disease. You have no money, Always Jimmy. Loving it. <laughs> yep. Buddy. You know what? Even all those years ago, though, you would look at Vince's arms through that coat that he wore. And oh, dude. Vince oh, yeah. was a big boy. I'm oh, like, yeah. man, he's big. Yeah. You, you know? remember when when King Kong Moscow waffled Pat Patterson with the oh, water yeah. with the ice Vince pitcher. Was right there. What are you doing? Yeah, I yep. was I, as a youngster. I was like, why doesn't Vince do something? Yeah. Vince could probably take it. This you know, even King Kong right. Moscow, I think yeah. he could Vince, could have I done think, something I, with. I think obviously Vince wanted to be a wrestler back then. Oh, absolutely, he sure did. You know, it's, it's the best, the best part. Point. The best part of the water pitcher thing was Moscow almost slipped and broke his skull. Yeah. 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 Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. A slippery uh, floor in the agricultural hall there. I said the same thing when he was revving up Billy Super when Superstar Billy Graham was revving up Backlund's title. He was leaning down. What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? What are you doing? I'm like, Vince, just clock this son of a bitch. You're just as big as the guy. Right. Absolutely. Right. I mean, there's a right. storyline right there. You know, that'll put butts in seats at the garden next month. Jeez. No kidding. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, what is Gordon yeah, Soli was the first. Gordon Soli was the first announcer I ever heard because uh, yeah. the first wrestling I got to come across was on UHF. Also, and believe it or not, Florida Championship Wrestling was wow. on one of the was on one of the Spanish stations. But I but it was in English. That's it was so, so cool. weird. Huh? Yeah, it was on very late yeah. at night. It was on very late at night one yeah. night during the uh, the work week, I guess, or the school week for us back mm. right there. Right, right, right. And I, I, this was the days of Sir Oliver Humperdinck and, and a wrestler named Mr. Florida and, you know, oh, Bugsy yeah. McGraw. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Dusty came through. When Dusty would come through, it would be like, oh, my God. But I also remember seeing Steve Kern before yeah. he became that pathetic Skinner. 
you know, yeah. which I, I got to take shots at Steve Kerr. And I, just I know. Just like that. I can't help it. You know? <laughs> Oh my By God. the way, I just want to get this in. What a sure. great, great, great interview Mike just gave with Chuck Palumbo. Oh, my God. That was I phenomenal. That. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, that, that was, was fantastic. Outstanding. That was good that stuff. Was excellent, yeah. excellent stuff. I know I'm biased and all, but, man. No. That was, that was yeah, killer. I really, honestly, and this is, like, this is not BS. You know, this that, to me, that's what separates this, this channel from all right. other channels. Yeah. Because right. very little of that was about wrestling. Right. Right. It was a human interview, not a wrestling yeah, interview. He was talking right. to the human Chuck Palumbo. Right. Well, that's where but, Mike gets all the credit in the world. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. years back, years back I, I had in mind to do like, you know, a, a purely wrestling and all of this stuff. And he was like, get the fuck out of here. And then we started talking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I, I can play off this. Absolutely. Yep. Let's yep. let's do it. You know what I, had I mean? A, I had a similar I interview with yeah. Mark. I had a similar interview with Mark Merrow. And uh, we talked okay. two seconds of wrestling. And the rest was all about life. Right. Positivity, um, how to you know how to balance life, mental, yeah. spiritual, all that stuff. I mean, it, it yeah. turned into a great interview. He was a great guest, yeah. uh, you know, because everybody was like, "Oh, ask him about Sable," and I go, "No one wants to right. dig up that dirt." I mean, we right. can read about that, whatever. Right. He even right. said, "He goes, my divorce is public record. You want to know what happened? Just pull up a file." You know, right. it was quick, but you know, forty-five minutes. I think two minutes of wrestling. The rest was all about. The, you right. know, just the wellness and the goodness of uh, your heart and that type of stuff. And, you know, I love those types of interviews because you, you think you're going to one direction. Yeah. And like, oh, boom, 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 you're going to right. another one. It's like, I right. like it. Cactus order. Jack in ECW had a great spiel about WCW back at that time frame in the mid 90s. Yeah. And he said, through the magic of WCW, yeah. a Jewish man from Brooklyn can become a black man from Macon <laughs> through the magic of WCW. <laughs> and that's Mark Marrow right there, Johnny B. Bad. Yeah. Yep. Hey guys, I gotta pay some bills real quick, so we're gonna be right back. All right. All righty. Yes, sir. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Tired of that same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference? Change that scrambled egg with a little bit of Johnny Fabulous's John Cena Sr.'s Million Dollar Jalapeno Hot Sauce. Great on burgers, steaks, chops, and those barbecued ribs. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage. Ask for Jack. Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J, video games and collectibles. All right, we are back. We are back to Wrestling Remembered, and we got... The crew is in the house. Phil DeCesare, the player and special guest, the Farrell in the house. Jimmy Farrell, thanks for joining us. This yeah. is quite the treat here on Wrestling Remembered. We don't get special guests very often, but when we do, we it's gonna be really be, special. It's gonna be the big one, right? It's gonna be him. Yeah, so, with yeah. special needs. Oh yeah. yeah. Never <laughs> there you go. And right. uh, as always, <laughs> uh, shout out to the chat, lively chat again tonight. Thank yeah, you for tuning in. He's Ibs out on. there. Now, who's Ibs Bond? Ibs on. Ibs on. He's always on. Ibs on a royal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Big, big, big Tune is in the house. How about that? Big Tune is here. 
Uh, hey, Jason, uh, Will, and all the uh, Friday night players are here. So, I, I uh, thought I saw a donation earlier. Was I hallucinating? Yeah, Baby Cakes put something out there. Uh, wow. wow. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's been uh, – she found that button. So, yeah, there it is. She goes, I just learned something I did not know. Cheers to the panel. Uh, that was a few uh, That was a few minutes ago, so it must have been something we were talking about. There so, you go. Baby right. Cakes yeah. rules. Five nice. bucks. She gave five nice. bucks. Jeez, there goes dinner tonight. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> PBJ for uh, what a day later. I think we got fish, we got fish sticks in the oven. I think no, Mrs. Paul. Okay. Hey, look, whatever works. At least you're reading. I know whatever, whatever works. Right? Whatever works. So we're talking yeah. about wrestling's most memorable voices. We we've had a handful so far. Um, I like. Well, I, I, I like this one. I sorry, I got tongue tied for a second. This guy had the legendary voice, and some people say he had the most famous voice of all. And I'm talking about Mean Gene Okerlund. Oh yeah, uh, to get uh, this yeah. guy was. I mean, he could have done anything and made it sound like it was the breaking news story of the year, um, whatever it was. But uh, I didn't know him until he came to the WWF uh, with the Hulk Hogan thing and all that stuff. Even he, he, I think he came aboard a little bit before Hogan. He was teaming up with Vince McMahon for color commentary during championship wrestling because late you know, 83, all, Joe. Yeah, yeah. 83. So, you know, I got a taste of who he was then, but. You know, when Cable came along and all that stuff, and you find out, oh, he was with AWA, and I didn't know that. So, uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. I'll, 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 I'll tell you, Mean Gene, there was never anybody like him before him, uh, and there's never been anybody nope, like him uh, never since will be. him. No, no. Okay? Gene Oakland could take anybody and make them look like a million dollars. Yeah. He was the absolute best and u- most unique of any commentator we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah. All right. And and Mike and I were very, very blessed and lucky to have met Gene right at the end. Right. Uh, and I and I mean Me too, right Carol. at the end. Yeah. There was, there, was a, there was a big event several years back. Yeah. And there's Gene, and Gene was very gracious and kind, and you could see that it was close. You know what yeah. I mean? It was, it was, it was coming. Was that, was that when he was signing the microphones and all that stuff? Was he doing that gig back then? Because uh, he may he may have been, but at this point, Gene was not near his table. Gene was oh, yeah. Gene was talking with, I can't remember exactly, but I think possibly Valentine was over there. Okay. And uh, it was also the same day that Mike and I got to meet uh, Mil Mascaris. Oh, so wow. it, was a, it was a very interesting uh, little... Uh, Did he sell for you, of- Jimmy? Did he what? Did Mill sell for you? <laughs> Mill told me that that by no means will he sell for anybody ever. <laughs> so basically, no, no, I'm making that up. But we he's all know that now, and he still doesn't sell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and it's a great story. Of course, Mike knows it, so he's probably like, "Oh God, he's telling the story again." But we went right. to the garden to watch that infamous battle royal uh, where Fuji and Saito were the last two in there, and they bowed to each other and split the money. Oh, oh wow! And, break and, and, and the there, crowd man. was furious, and I thought to myself, "This is amazing." I'm like, yep. "What a great ending that they did yeah. that!" But anyway, the person yeah. who took us, the per- the kid who we went with, his father took us, and the kid was his favorite wrestler was Mascaris, right? Yep. Mascaris got went in and got shucked out like immediately, and my the friend was crushed. Oh. We didn't know it. We didn't know at wow. the time that wow. if Mascaris is not going to win, he's not going to work. Right. We didn't know yeah. that at the time, but now yeah. we know it, you know. So I wow. mean, he was just wow. crushed that that wow. Mascaris was eliminated, but Mill was not, you know, a team player really from what it yeah. sounds like. <laughs> I totally forgot about this back in 1987, but the WWF experimented with a female ring announcer. Michael Kathleen McGuirk. Yeah. 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 I totally forgot about her. I could, and in that 87, I was a senior in high school. So, you know, me, Missy Beepcake was probably around that time too. So I right. had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, I forgot right. about her. I told her. Brian her. Blair's ex wife. Is That's that who right. that is? Right. Okay. Yeah. And I does, was anybody, told, does anybody here on the panel recall her? I don't recall. Vaguely. Very, very vaguely. It was a few pay per views. It was less than a year. They experimented with it. Um, it just didn't come uh, to me. It wasn't memorable to me. I would have remembered it. I think it was about the time of the Federettes, and yeah, and uh, Federettes, I think yeah. Vince was experimenting a little bit. He loved ladies and tuxedos, and you know who was pretty cool. And, and Benny, maybe you can help me out here with this one because this is a Florida Championship Wrestling memory, and I hope I got the name right. If I don't, forgive me. But there was a woman uh, that did spots named Barbara Cleary. I th- I think. She yes. was fantastic. Yes, she I was, remember. She was really yes. good from what I remember. I I, too. 
-hmm. was that I did get the name right? Yeah, she was yeah. she was awesome. I mean, nobody talks about her. Okay, yeah. Phil, you know what? You want to put someone in the Hall of Fame for being a you know a yeah. groundbreaking? I was the first to do something. I think it should be her. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, if we're going to do stuff like that, I mean, yeah. she was way ahead of her time, and she gave good interviews and stuff. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. You know, real quickly about the Hall of Fame. I know we talked I about agree. it last night. Real quick, um, Jimmy, you mentioned that you you. Uh, Pretty much bottom line, you said this Hall of Fame this year sucks going in. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, I stand and, by that. Yeah. So I started digging around, and there are a lot of people out there now, fans, journalists, yeah. everything. They, they, they're they very, very disappointed in this year's class. Uh, it's, it's, not, no, no, no dig against very them. Very underwhelming. Uh, very it's, underwhelming. Yeah, when it's headlined by Paul Heyman. I, I mean, I feel bad for Heyman if he's the headline of this whole he, night. He, he's it, not. He's not because we're not done yet. Because I do no, I, believe in my, I believe in my heart that Bray Wyatt's going in this year. It's got to be if Mertan, okay. if his dad's going in. That's got to yeah. be. Yeah, uh, I, I believe in my heart that Bray Wyatt's going. Yeah. Bray Wyatt is going in, and and in a lot of ways, sadly though, he, he is the the headline in yeah. a lot of ways. But you know what though? To be fair though, Paul yeah. Heyman uh, in resume is the headline. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Paul Hey Paul Heyman is the greatest. Is the great. It's the longest serving. Great manager of his of of any day when you yeah. really think about it. He's been doing this for decades. I mean, come on, you know oh, we can uh, love the only one I'll even I'll put above him, and I will put someone above him is Bobby. But mm -hmm. that's that's the only one I'm doing it for. I'm not putting Albano above Paul Heyman. I can't do it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter how much I love Albano. It doesn't matter how much I love the Grand Wizard. I'm not going to do that. Paul Heyman yeah. is the greatest outside of Bobby. Bobby, I'm just yeah. very partial yeah. to. I always will be, but I think Bobby deserves that biasness from me. Bobby was the greatest, but yeah, Paul is the, sec the second greatest in my mind. It's like yeah. Ruth and Garrick, as far as I'm concerned. Well, Paulie did learn from from the captain and from oh, the Wiz and from Blassie, right. you know, yeah. right. directly. Yeah, I'm right. sure. We're, I'm sure we're going to hear those stories during his acceptance speech too. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, now, I will mention this guy in the chat, uh, Jesse the Body. Yes, yeah, Jesse, I, um, Jesse you was knew great. he was talking. You knew he was talking when he was on the mic. I believe Gorilla. I believe Gorilla. You know that type of stuff. I mean, he. You talk about wow, a, You talk about a colorful <laughs> color commentator. This guy, um, you know, probably the best thing that ever happened was that he, you know, he was forced to retire right. um, due to a heart condition, and then they threw him behind the you know, microphone, right. and magic right. was made. Uh, this right. guy had a gift. He, he Phil, was... I think I Phil, I think it's Jack McMahon. He used to call me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did, yeah, right. Jack, <laughs> hell is a Jack McMahon. Yeah, and that toupee, was... and that toupee that Vince wore, you would yeah. always refer right. to. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't think JC could uh, go over as well this uh, nowadays with the uh, cancel culture going on. But you know, no. Chico Santana, no. right? And, you know that right. wet back and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, right. you listen to some of these old tapes. We called uh, Tito and Tom Zink the the. Mexican connection. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's in, in a way, it's kind of sad because the, you know the the wrestling fans today and 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 the culture we're in today. Oh, uh, they don't know. Probably that. think to themselves, "What a terrible time you must have lived in." What are you talking oh, about? Oh. We all could take shots at each other, and we didn't go home and, and rage about it. Stop yeah. it! Yeah. You know, yeah. we yeah. everybody was able to poke fun at each other. Quite honestly, it was a socially, it was a much healthier world. And I know that that makes no sense to people today. Well, we could was. all make fun of each other, Jimmy. We all right. knew Irish jokes and this jokes oh, yeah. and that joke. And, I mean, you that's know, how you knew everybody. That's how you. You knew her. You got the that's, you, know, you got the Greek right. on the corner, the mix in town. You that's, know, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's that's right. right. Here's a I've got I've got a uh, here here is a a generic uh, joke for for us. Okay, we will not insert any uh, any race or any ethnicity. Okay, all right. I, I'm going to use the word um, generic in place. Did you hear about the generic guy who broke his leg while he was raking leaves? No, what oh, about the generic guy who broke his leg while raking leaves? He fell from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> substitute, <laughs> substitute your own. You know, I thought, I thought group. His name was what, what did the generic guy say on his way to the electric chair? <laughs> what? what did, he said, what the joke's on you. Guy? You got the wrong guy. Oh, there, you go. there we go. There we. Go. How many generic guys does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> How many? 
Oh, well, I don't know. It all depended on whoever had the answer for that one. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to keep it generic, Phil. I hear you, uh, man. Uh, well, I'm not going to keep you. it generic because I used to love Magnificent Morocco's promos against Pedro Morales. Wow. When he used to come on, I used to go to school. Give me two tacos, a cheese enchilada, and a bottle of tequila to go. I'm going to take right. care of Pedro. What a- I mean, you talk about... Saying that right. nowadays, and, and right. the term the, "grease ball" that he would use ball. quite frequently. Right. Yeah, yes, right. How about Ernie Ladd? Uh, Ernie Ladd at defending nationalities. Oh yeah. yeah, because that's what sold. That's that's what it was. That's, that's even how you, got it. you know even insulted Bobo Brazil. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Bobo, take you know, the god away. You know, Uncle okay. Tom. What really gets what really gets lost too is is because patriotism in my mind is 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 dead. Oh yeah. Okay? Oh yeah. Back in those days, the re- the reason why Hulk Hogan was a hero oh. was is because Russia sucks. Yeah, you- the Middle East sucks. They don't have our values, and they're completely our enemies. Today's generation wants to be friends with everybody. Yeah. That, the, the, you know, that's really nice to have that sort of idealism, but it's not realistic. It's not realistic. It's yep. just not realistic, you know. So there, there was a reason why Hulk Hogan was a hero, or yeah, why yeah. Sergeant Slaughter, when he fought the Sheik, everybody suddenly loved Sergeant Slaughter. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because we grew up, and you know, this might be a little bit of an education for the younger folks. We yeah. grew up. Our parents grew up in the shadow of their parents who fought during the World Wars. Yeah. Greatest generation. Yep. You, damn you right. know, yeah. it was it was it was much closer to our time period than these kids know about today. Yep. You know, I mean, when we were going that. to school, do you realize when we were going to school, Hitler was only yeah. a, a couple of decades in the rearview mirror, for God's sake. What, what, what are we what talking about? Vietnam was fresh fresh over when I was a kid going to school. It was like, oh, they're talking about Vietnam. Well, that was like years ago. Yeah, like five or yeah. six years ago. You know right. what I mean? It's like, oh, I shouldn't right. say the Vietnam War was the conflict or whatever. Right. It was, but the, 19, the 1980s was a wonderful time to be a kid. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It was a wonderful time because people don't realize that, you know, all politics aside, here's the facts that when Ronald Reagan came in, our country was definitely hurting. Oh, and yeah. by the time oh, Ronald Reagan was done, our country was once again looking from the top of the mountain. The shiny down, hill, baby. Without, without, invading, without starting world wars, yeah. without, you know, like, you know, profiling and all this other garbage. You know, I mean, there was... It's, I'm sorry. That's what happened. That's the way right. it was. And everybody you know? made fun of politicians on late night, and it was funny. It was right. funny. Music right. videos made fun of politicians because right. it was mm-hmm. funny. It wasn't right. like oh, we're trying to cancel you or sway your vote or whatever. Right. It was just funny. I watched yeah, right. Johnny Carson clips, and they're constantly, you know, ranking on Carter and Nixon and, um, mm-hmm. you know, right. Reagan and all. Reagan was probably the most that people did. Oh, absolutely. Late you know, night the night. comedian, Rich Little, he made a oh, living yeah. imitating uh, presidents. Yeah, exactly. What about, I mean, the, what about the Genesis video where Reagan yeah. pushes the button? Land of confusion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great, great video. He's yeah. Waking up in a wet dream. In, yeah, he's waking up in a wet dream. Yeah, that was yep. that won an award, I think. I think that won an award. Well, I mean, listen to the words in there. Superman, yeah. where are you now? And everything yeah. went wrong somehow. Yeah. I mean, it was just, you know. And that, the man of steel, the man of power, losing control by the hour. Yeah. Oh, I mean, my God. I think, I think in 1984-85, if Hulk Hogan ran for president, he probably would have freaking won. Hey, Sergeant yeah. Slaughter was invited to the uh, White House, remember, by Reagan, too. So yeah, let me tell right. you, these right. guys were cultural icons. Right. I Mr. mean, they wrestling were. Mr. Wrestling, too. Mr. Wrestling, too. Yep. And I was like, whoa, a wrestler yep. in the White House? Right. Are you kidding me? Wow. Well, you, you know what? I got to throw this in. I'm sure Karen's watching inside. I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, George Bush Sr. Yes. was Wahoo McDaniel's baseball coach. Yeah. Okay? yeah. When, he, when he was a kid. So yeah. basically, years and years later, uh, Wahoo got invited to the White House, sure. and and Flair wanted him to go because Flair yeah. was like, "Oh, I'm going. Of course, I'm going." Blah 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 blah. And Wahoo didn't go. You know why? Because Wahoo why? went fishing. That's why. Wow. Oh, got to love know, it. Wahoo was like, "I don't. What am I going? I, I want to go fishing. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm off this. I got a couple of days off, and I want to go do what I enjoy. I don't need to go to some stupid thing, wear a suit, have over over, you know." caviar or whatever that wasn't wahoo yeah. not from what i've gathered right. you know, so I, I found that hilarious that he'd rather wow, go fishing you know yeah it, it, it is pretty funny that's you knew, awesome you knew had a very distinct voice and you knew she was coming when the, uh, you know she was approaching the microphone was luna for oh Whoa. my god luna, she had a voice man i don't know did, did she fake that voice do you know of i didn't know her personally but no uh, i don't she uh, had a it was similar but it was just turned up i think she yeah, kind of had that 
that scratchy, growly yeah. voice to begin yeah. with. Yeah, yeah then, well, I, I remember Gangrel because we had him on several times, a really good yeah. guy, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Him, yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 I think that she might have been pretty heavy with smoking, perhaps. I, I, I don't oh, know. Really? Okay. You, you know, I'm really not completely sure. But, uh, you know, obviously her health wasn't the greatest by the end. She didn't last as long as she could have or should have. Yeah. Speaking of a, a screamer, uh, who can forget Sherry Martel? Great. I mean, he could it's scream. Great. And act. Oh, look at that first picture, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was like, right. I saw her in a cage match similar to that in 92. And the Ultimate Warrior threw her off the cage. And I'm like, she's taking bumps. I know she was a wrestler, but oh, okay. this is before, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. It's all right, crazy. guys, I'm going to I'm gonna break a little character right uh, here for a second and take uh -oh. off my gimmick. I'm going to take off uh -oh. my gimmick. Uh oh, he's got we the We have, I don't know if you can see this, but this is, Karen just gave this to me. Let me go this oh, there way. You go. Yeah. That's, George yeah. Bush, that's George Bush Sr. And it says here yeah. to Wahoo McDaniel. From his former coach, baseball, that is, yeah. with warm yeah. regards, George Bush. <laughs> Damn. So, wow, so there, there you go right there. And, and then a little – what does that say right there? You went fishing. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? No, he doesn't nice. say that. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. Good. That's, That's awesome. great. That's awesome. I love that yeah. stuff. Yep. Great, great. Wow, I look really tired. What the fuck? Give me back on. You look All like right. you missed. <laughs> You look like you missed a flight or something. Your flight got canceled. Oh, uh, that's very funny, there, Lowry. That's very funny. <laughs> that's, that's good. That, this is why I like what a day. He's sharp. He's a he's a pretty he's a pretty fart smeller. That, there you <laughs> go. Smart fellow. Here's another old AWA Love guy it. who went over the WWF. Uh, Ken Resnick. He yes. Had, he without had a the voice. voice. Without so, the mustache. Yep. Oh, he had a boy. TV voice, man. He you could. I mean, this is when the WWF was really growing and. It, you know, in, in those mid 80 days, it seems like they had announcers like, yeah, singing, Sean Moody, well, Resnick, all he these was, guys. Yeah, Ken Resnick also. Uh, we were able to see Pro Wrestling USA for yep. a spell yep. up here, yes. too, with the NWA and AWA. And Ken Resnick was was the, the yep. voice of the show, from what I remember. He hey, had yeah. a great wrestling voice. Uh, am I crazy? But was Sean, wasn't Sean Mooney pretty damn good at what he did? He was, yeah. he was he was an actual news guy. He went on to broadcast yeah. news after that. Yeah. Yeah. He knew his stuff. He knew his stuff. It, they treated him like a news guy. He was always in the control room. He was always Yeah. They had that news element. That's probably why I got addicted to that type of stuff because I love that mm. element of wrestling, the news, yeah. the, the control room, the realism. You, the realism of it all, you know, and that's yeah. I love that aspect of it. So Hey, yeah, and tell you what, I'm shocked. We're 58 minutes in and nobody's mentioned good old JR. Um, what are you talking about? He's next on my list. But boom! All, All right, right, right there. There you go. There you UF, go. Uh, U Universal Wrestling Federation (UWF) he started out in, right? We mid South, Mid South, yep. all those yep. places. He was a referee uh, in Mid South. Yes, oh, he you, was. That's right. He was. Yes, he sir. was a referee. Yep. Good old JR. Even before Bill Watts, like yep. the McGurk. Uh, was, uh, yeah, Leroy McGurk, McGurk, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, after Gordon Soli, uh, Jr. is obviously next, or or yeah. you know, he, he could even be neck and neck with them. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I can see yeah, people saying yeah, that. Jr. Uh, Soli and Lance Russell are my top three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, yeah. Then, right. You know, uh, world class championship wrestling from Texas. Who could forget Mark Lawrence and Bill Mercer good. and the Bill sleep Mercer. hold the Bill Mercer photo because I thought of him when I thought of Mark Lawrence. But yeah, Bill Mercer. Both are still alive too. You oh know, yeah, which is amazing. Yeah. Bill Mercer's in his nineties, still pretty wow. sharp too. And Bill Mercer, Phil, Phil, it's, Phil it's time to take your roids. Your clock is going. <laughs> uh -oh, there it is. It's the Undertaker's in the house, right? I'm sorry, <laughs> Phil. I can't help it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those guys. I mean, I, I don't know who else we could possibly mention. I mean, there's just so I, many of them. I got as many as I could together. Stagger Lee Marshall. This guy's Stagger still alive from Mid Atlantic. Uh, Bob Cottle. Bob yeah. Cottle. Bob Cottle. I think he's in his nineties as well. He is also still alive and yes. well, and that's so what that's so gratifying to know. It's it's too bad we're regulated back then because you know all of us, most of us, were regulated to WWF programming because of the right. Northeast. Right. And then when you get a hold of Gordon, people that listen to Gordon Soley and Lance Russell and all those guys. And mm -hmm. it's like, wow, that, that, that's that's what drew me to those things. You know, living right. out of the wrestling magazines for a year was fun. But mm -hmm. when cable finally hit and I could finally hear these guys, oh man, right, it was a whole new right. ball different game level. 
whole new, yeah. whole, new whole different J- jr's announcing during of course the infamous uh undertaker foley match yeah, oh, that, yeah. really, that really sums it up i mean as yeah. far as He's JR. That. He's, i mean if the stunt itself didn't sell it but when him say, well, somebody in the back, get off their damn butts. Yep. Oh, yeah. my God, he's dead. You know, it's like yep. at first you fall for it. But if it was really that real, I think JR yep. and Jerry the King probably would have got up and seen what the hell was going yep. on. Yep. I no, the, the Spanish yep. announce team took a beating on that one. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> now, I'm surprised nobody's mentioned it uh, because I think it gets a bad rap and people are bitter because of the circumstances around this. But I thought Vince and Macho Man did a pretty damn good job together. Yeah, he I did. Mean, Macho, absolutely. Good. He did. Macho, Macho Man should be talked about here. What did you guys think very, about Macho very, Man very. as a uh, color commentator? Yeah, especially in the early days of Monday Night Raw. Certainly. Yeah, right. He was uh, right. yeah, another, he was, he was quite good. Another guy on the microphone, you heard his voice, and boom, you knew who he was. It's like, yep, right. Macho Man. Whether and, or not somebody was somebody, Jim or post Slim Jim. So. And somebody else we really definitely should talk about, because I've always enjoyed his announcing. Yeah. Is Tony Schiavone okay? Oh, Tony Sinan, yep. Tony yeah. Schiavone is a damn good announcer because he relays uh, excitement. Yeah, very well, very felt, well, and he always I, did. I still feel bad for him because he was told by Bischoff to tell everybody to don't turn the damn channel because some guy McFoley's going right. to win. The it's not his fault. It's not his fault. He was just the messenger, no. and right. he took such flack. It was almost similar to Bill Buckner uh, right. back in '86. Mm-hmm. Same thing, there Buckner. Much flack until 04, and they finally gave him a ring. Just to right. You know, right. I was at the man. I was at. The, I was at the Worcester. It was at the Worcester Centrum the night that Mick Foley won yeah. the title. Oh, 99. Snowy yeah. night. Oh, and yeah. Just, yep, in 99. You wager. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep, you know Central. what, Phil? Phil, Never I think expected. you. I Phil, I think you were part. If you, if it's the match I'm thinking of, I think you, you probably heard the loudest pop. Yep. Oh in, my in god. The history of this business. There's no doubt about it. It, it was because such a shock. When, I mean, am I remembering this correctly? Yes, Stone Cold yes. came out. Yeah, they, had, they awesome. had everybody out there. They had all the main eventers oh, out there. Oh, Shamrock, my. DX, everybody. McMahon oh, my were God. Out there. Oh, yeah. But the, was, yeah. but the roar when, when Austin oh, yeah. came out was the loudest thing I think I've ever heard. You oh, yeah. Hear, I'm, getting, you I'm getting goosebumps yeah, thinking about it. You know? right now. I'm yeah, like, the yeah. water. Can I go like this? Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know? I mean, my hairs wow. are standing up. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever see another pop like that. You can try. I know the CM Punk yeah. thing at the Rumble no. and uh, right, that Rumble was great. Series, that was but great. like, I don't know, The Rock on SmackDown a few months, you know, a few weeks right. ago. You know, that surprise, that element of surprise yeah, that we that so miss, annual. we really was, miss right. now. Yeah, right. Well, let me and tell it, you, I got to get, I got to get this in too, since we're talking sure. about that mo- that moment with Austin. I yeah. just read. Oh God! Here I go. I just Uh-oh. read <laughs> Mercedes Monet say, yeah. "I felt like Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, the other no. night." Shut the yeah. fuck up! <laughs> what the what the fuck makes you think for even a second that you even experienced a sliver? Four and a half million dollars a year. That's what. That's why she thinks like that. I. You know what? I got to get Phil's opinion on this. Phil, yes. what, what do you think? What do you think when you hear Mercedes Monet go? Well, I felt like Stone Cold Steve Austin. How clueless is this generation? Yeah, I, 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 I it, it befuddles me because she couldn't be anything further from Stone Cold Steve Austin in any way. And uh, I, I, no way, no. No, that, I mean, I, I had people, I had friends in Boston watching that whole thing un, unravel the other night. And if it wasn't for the CEO blaring, the, the music blaring over that, everybody was chanting, but it wasn't Stone Cold level. It wasn't no. Hulk Hogan beating the Iron Sheik level. Right. It was none of that. It was nowhere it was near Dick that. The Milkman. Right. Uh, yeah, level. right. Right. Jake, people, Jake Milligan. <laughs> yeah, people, people may forget this one because it's not important or legendary or anything like that, but it's at the end of Hogan's WWE career. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and our good buddy Eugene, it was a WrestleMania, and oh, Eugene yeah. came yeah. Eugene came out, and then Mohammed, this poor guy who played his yeah. role fantastic, Mohammed Hassan came out yeah. and started to beat down Eugene. And then Hogan's music hit. Yeah. And the place absolutely exploded yeah. louder than anything i hear today and this yeah. is hogan at the very very end yeah. i mean it was just it's a, it's just amazing that yeah. that the, the old school stars had that yeah. kind of reaction what was it the raw after wrestlemania 2002 in montreal whatever it was the yeah. f- 10 minutes standing ov- ovation they gave hogan 
It yeah. was like that's when the Raws after money became popular. Like they put on their own, they put on their own show outside of yep. that. And uh, what's more, even more remarkable, Joe, about that is that it happened in Montreal, where it's yep. like, uh, it's like, uh, what do they call it up there? It's totally like the opposite. Uh, there's a term. It's it's out of a Superman comic, but it's Ooh. everything is opposite up there. You know, bizarro. it's just yeah. bizarro. Yeah. bizarro. Thank you. Bizarro. Bizarro. Yes. Bizarro. Yes, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you yep. don't see that. I mean, I, no. I, I'm just, I'm mortified no. that she would come comment and say that. I mean, right. there's just no comparison. I, I, yep. Unless nope. she's trying to rope in the new generation, it's just not you know, happening. I got news. I got news for you, Mercedes Monet. When <laughs> when Linda McMahon got up out of the chair at that WrestleMania to kick Vince in the nuts was thirty thousand times <laughs> yeah, louder it was. It was. than anything you'll ever hear, Sasha. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, stop it already. Yeah. She's no I, bionic redneck, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I was I was at the, I was at the uh, TD Guard the night I was at the TD Guard the night of um, Undertaker putting Stone uh, putting Stephanie on the cross. Wow. And then, oh uh, yeah. Stone, Cold, Stone Cold's music. Even though yeah. it was another Stone Cold thing, but the surprise element. Crazy. You, my son went home. Was like my ears are ringing. My ears. I go. That's how I went home once a month every Saturday from the garden. Yeah. From your ears ringing. And he right. got. A, I got to admit though, I was never a big fan of these crucifixion. No, oh, definitely. Yeah. Not. What, what, what are you? What are you? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Whether you have a true belief in religion or not, pushing they're, the envelope. It's factual that there was a, a preacher from Nazareth who was murdered that way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I mean, what on earth are we doing sometimes? But all yeah. right, whatever. It's you crazy, know? absolutely crazy. Yeah, I mean, my son, we uh, saw Edge and Hogan win the tag belts at a SmackDown taping at the Garden, and he went home with his ears ringing. He was like 10, 10 11 years old, and he's like, my ears are ringing, my ears are I go, right. that's how it used to be with Hulkamania. You went home. No, right? Yeah, went not only yeah. ears ringing, Joe, but hoarse from screaming. Oh, yeah, screaming. Forget about it. Forget so. about it. Yep. What you know. about when? What about when the name Jericho came across the Titan oh, yeah. in 1999? You want to talk yeah, about an explosion? I yep. still revisit that moment yep. every once oh, in a while. I love it's it. amazing because you know what? It. There was such a buildup for that. Yep, yep. It was awesome. Yep. And you kind of did, you didn't know though. You didn't know it was him back then. I mean, the internet was new. Right. All that stuff. The, you know, right. There right. were options. You, you, you thought it might be a few people, but you yeah. weren't sure. No one was telling you who was in the building that night and. Who was right. seen at the restaurant that you know right. 10 hours before? But so, it yeah, me, it was like he was the hottest free agent back then in '99 when he a left WCW absolutely. and nobody knew where he was going. And you know, Vince wanted absolutely. him bad, absolutely. You know, and you know what? The, and, and it's the, this is the funniest part to me the the the, the mark, the independent marks and the anti WWE marks love, love to glorify WCW. You know what, fellas? WCW never knew what they had in Chris yep. Jericho. But Vince McMahon, and I remember when I heard the rumors that Jericho might be coming to Vince, I prayed for, for whatever it's worth as a wrestling fan, I prayed that Vince would realize who he was getting. Sure. So when the music hit and his first program is with The Rock, I was oh, yeah. all yeah. elated. I was like, Vince gets New. it. Yeah, he got it. He did. He gets he it. He yeah. gets it. And people don't understand that when he won that war, he took guys that were not main event and made them made the main them. event stone cold never got that shot in the other companies yep. you know he nope. never nope. did you know the rock had a, had a bit of a struggle but at first but the rock obviously got to where he got to because vince had big ideas for big auras yeah yeah he knew, he knew how to get the most out of somebody he had, he had that vision he had that yeah. vision he knew what it could be and you know, what he did with Foley. I mean, we're talking about failed. Foley. Look what he did with Foley. Foley oh, yeah. wouldn't be who he is today without Vince. Get out of here, you know? Foley was just about uh, all done in WC. Like, they wanted him off. They wanted his no career after that. And then Vince right. says, I'll take in. Look what he did with Mean Mark. Yeah. Right. WC yeah, WC. well, mean Vince Mark specialized in, you know, the more raw the clay was, the better he was able to mold that clay sure. into something – Larger than life. And, uh, and and to give credit to Vince, too, sometimes guys don't have, like, for example, some guys don't have the Hogan aura or the Rock aura or whatever, but he holds the course with wrestlers a lot of the time, and it does pay off. And here's two examples as to where they clearly don't have a Hulk Hogan aura or a Rock aura or a, uh, a, a Rick Flair aura. aura to them, okay? Roman Reigns is one, and Randy Orton is another, Yeah. okay? Yeah. These guys are not exactly magic on the mic, 
Right. But over the years, because he stayed the course, he didn't sit there and worry about what the internet had to say. And that's his greatest, in my opinion, it's one of his greatest characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that he, he, he did know better. He knew better. And that's why Roman Reigns is now the biggest star in the business. Sure. That's why sure. Randy Orton, it's funny how long it took Randy Orton to get true appreciation from the WWE universe. True appre- ad- adulation. It took yeah. forever, but we're there now. I and think that, I, think, I, I could say the same thing with Roman Reigns. Seven, eight years ago, he was. they were trying to push Roman Reigns as the next right. big thing. I right. remember going to house shows. They were booing him. Raw right. shows, they were booing him. It just wasn't working out. Then he won the Rumble, what, like three years in a row or something like that? Right, uh, right. That, that crazy stuff. And, you know, but, and then all of a sudden, I don't know what it is, that Bloodline story hit well, a couple of years ago. And I'll, I said, I'll, this is what Vince was waiting for. This moment I'll, here. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what it is, okay? The reason why the Bloodline exploded yep. was is because of all those years. You see, right. Well, right. Roman was never booked yeah. as a scrub. No. OK, whether we liked it or not, Roman was being protected all those years. OK, the shield. I'm sorry. You could boo Roman. I loved Roman from day one. I'm yep. one of them. All right. I loved him from day one. I loved the shield. The shield is one of yeah. the greatest factions, in my opinion, in the yep. history of this business. And half the time we were, you know, not me, but we were booing him. And I'm going to myself, are you serious? This is the muscle of the one of the best factions of the last 20 years. What are you yep. what are you looking at, guys? What are you seeing here that I obviously don't see? Thank God I didn't see what they saw. Otherwise, we don't have what we have today. It's the same thing with Randy. There was plenty of times where the fans were like, oh, no, John Cena and Randy Orton again? Uh, yeah, again, <laughs> because they're great. And they had a great – I mean, if if Randy Orton is not John Cena's Joker, I don't know who is. Yeah. You know, to, to John's Batman. Yeah. Okay? That's, that's, yeah, a, that's I, a great rivalry, period. You know? I, I, think, I, I think Vince has that talent of – Knowing what the wrestlers' limits are, whether it's on the mic and in the ring, right. and doing the utmost that they can with that. And you know, we just lost Hall of uh, you know, a guy who you know, Virgil, right? You know, he was right. very limited in what he could do, yes, but he did it to the best of his ability, and it was really good. The yes. guy was just the bodyguard, that's all he was, that's yep. you, you know, and that's what he yep. did. And then, you know, to go into that SummerSlam match against Ted DiBiase with no wrestling experience at all. Jerry the King Lawler was the one that helped train him. And right. he worked his absolute butt off to put on a very generic match. It, and yep. but, but he did what he was supposed to do. And he was a bodyguard. And that's it. You and know that's what? Vince the- had that talent. He knew what your limit was. He, knew, he, did. You know, he wanted, Of course he wanted you to, to go past your limits. But he knew when enough was enough. Okay, this is as far as right. we can go. Let's see what we can do with that. Right, and I right. Think that's you know, where, the, that's the where it's good right now. The same could be said for Triple H. There was plenty yeah. of times over the years, fans. I don't like Triple H. Blah, 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 blah. Triple H is out of legends. What are, you, what, are you talk, what are you talking about? Triple H yeah. is a legend. And by the way, Virgil, getting back to him real quick, Virgil was a specialist. Okay, and and a, a Hall of Fame level specialist because sure. how many people even sure. do the role that Virgil did? All right. Virgil was one of a kind as far as his, his specialist is, you know, what he did. He is yep. more worthy of being a WWE Hall of Famer than this than two thirds of this year's class. Yep. No, it's, it's, you're That's absolutely my right. opinion on that. I totally agree. I mean, I don't know. I just don't see, you know, I'm, I'm going back to this, this, this year's Hall of Fame class. I'm just not, I, I, I don't even know if I'm going to watch it, to be honest with you, but. Right. And I'm, ho- I'm hoping for another Bret Hart takedown like they did, you know, right before COVID when that went down. <laughs> I'll tell you, they want to cause some real ruffles. They should put Brock Lesnar in this year. That'd be that'd be hilarious. Well, you know, my feeling, I think he's the one that's going to induct Paul Heyman. I know you said CM Punk last night, but right. you right. want to you right. grow up, you know, take a blah Hall of Fame and kick it up a couple of notches. And that could be the recipe right, right there. So who right. knows? Who right. knows? Right. Who knows? Right. I saw something about the 86 Red Sox in this chat. I don't know how the hell that came in there. That's okay. my, Bill Buckner my Bill Buckner reference. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Ray Bill Knight. Buckner Ray was a fantastic ball player. It's sure very, very yeah, I remember for just one. I know. And again, well, it's a team effort, you know? 
Yeah. It's a you team effort. That, and yeah, yeah, sorry, Joe, but you can thank that dumbass manager for doing that. Who, McNamara? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. fired the next year, I think, right? Joe Morgan came in right after yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know he I know he meant well, but you know, you really yeah. do you gotta be smart and put in your best defensively. You're trying to win the World Series for the first time since nineteen eighteen. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, I think you know? um I think a lot of that had to do with Buckner saying he wanted to stay in or something like that. There was always this crazy right. I don't, right. I, don't know, I don't know how true that is. I've heard so many stories, but right, you know, that's right. over and done with. Thank God. Yeah. Thank you. Well, there you go. You know, there you go. Any, any other memorable voices you guys can think of, real quick, before we leave? Well, I think we've really covered a lot of them. If yeah, somebody can did. pull out another name, I'll be impressed. I mean, but we, we Lee Marshall. I wanted to say became the voice of Tony the Tiger. Talk about landing a great gig, really? you know? Really? He also hey, was the announcer. Right. Yeah. Hey. Didn't he just there die, though? Didn't he just die? The yeah, he died. Not, not too long. Well, he died a little while ago. At a relatively young age, too, sadly. Hmm. It yeah. was a 90, I thought a 96-year-old guy did um that. But he was the 96-year-old guy was replaced by Lee Marshall. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, when he yeah. Okay. A hell of a gig, man. Lee Marshall yeah. also was the ring announcer at WrestleMania 2 when they were out in L.A. for that portion. Okay. So, And he did a little cup of coffee with uh, with WWF. And uh, obviously, we knew him from AWA and then WCW. And uh, mm-hmm. definitely a memorable uh, guy. Very yeah. uh, I, I can't be completely is – it, is it, it, it is factual that King Kong Bundy is not in the hole, right? I don't believe he is. What What is that? You know, you say WrestleMania 2, and I think because Mike Mike was at WrestleMania 2. He loves that WrestleMania, even though the public oh, yeah. doesn't seem to. But uh, <laughs> how is King Kong Bundy not in the Hall of Fame? What the what, what What's going on there? He is not in the Hall of Fame. No. Nope. Wow. He's That's not. surprising. It wow. really is. Wow, Benny, what do you what do you say about that with King Kong Bundy? What do you think? Uh, you know, my opinion, though, uh, and I hope I'm right, is that in, in the next couple of years, I'm really hoping we see that we get to see – a lot of the wrongs get righted of people right. who have been neglected in the past. Yeah, and okay. I'd like to see a commitment to actually build a building. At, right. at the rate at the That'd rate we're nice. going right now, I don't think we're going to see anybody significant like that in a while. I mean, if they if they do this again next year, this type of class, mm-hmm. I, I you know, Tony Guerrero, Rick Martel, Ivan Koloff, three names right off the bat that are way. Uh, right. Overdue for a Hall of Fame nod, and right, still, right, okay. Well, I'll, t- yeah. I'll tell you, Rick Cole Martel. McConnell. Rick Martel should be in. I'm sorry, Rick yeah. Martel. World champion. Yeah. He was a former yeah. world champion, two time tag champion. I mean, yeah. the model. Then he came back as the model. I mean, right. you're talking about a guy who had to reinvent himself. You talk about an old time wrestler who had to reinvent himself to fit in with Vince's circus, and they right. throw the model gimmick at him, and he and did it great. again. Vince seeing what he could do. And he took it to the next level, and it was like that's amazing. He was, that's all he was fantastic. I was shocked. I never thought Rick Martel could pull off the heel thing. He did. Yeah. He did. He did. He, did. Yeah. he was. He was fabulous at it. He was fabulous. Yeah, he, at he, it. he turned on Tom. Uh, Tom Zenk, right? Didn't he turn on? No, him he turned on Tito. Tito. He turned Tito. Tito. Yeah. Tom Zenk left. Strike, yeah. Is that strike? Yeah. Strike force. Strike force. Yeah. Yes. I wow. Yeah. You know, and I, I want to get this in too because sure. it gets it really gets lost. Uh, you know, Vince, of course, is constantly look. I obviously. You know, I love Vince, okay? Sure. It's no secret. I, I love Vince McMahon. Uh, I, I don't know him as a person, and I don't give a shit. You know, whatever he does, if he ever gets convicted of something, I, I'll probably change my mind. But yep. until I see him convicted of something, I'm not changing my mind about the man. Everything is hearsay to me until there's a, a conviction. I'm sorry. I believe in I believe in the system. I believe in due process. But as far as this goes, the they love to say that Vince would never, ever put over someone from another organization to be at the very top of his company because it wasn't his. Well, then how do you explain that when the the world titles were finally unified, that Chris Jericho, a WCW product, an ECW product, beat The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin on the same night to unify the belts? Short memories. That's what they have. Short memories. What, What is that? I you know, know? I, yep. Benny, you're a traditionalist. You're probably the most traditionalist guy here, and I say that with nothing but respect. What did you think the night that Jericho won the won the world title? Were you surprised? I was surprised, but I I didn't mind. I thought it was great. Of course not. Yeah. Of course not. Right. That was in Seattle, right? Safeco Field, WrestleMania. Well, how about you know they they, they put the belt on uh, Benoit, they put it on Eddie Guerrero, both yeah. you know both WCW right. guys. Right. Right. 
it's monumental yep. stuff right there. So, I mean, Vince did what was good for business. He knew. He knew yep. what was going on. He was very, yep. very keen. Everyone thinks, oh, you know, he's getting old and all that stuff. He, He's like that guy that may fail at everything in his life, but when it comes to wrestling and his mm-hmm. baby, shop as yeah. attack. Shop right. as attack. And, yep. you know, I yep. mentioned Johnny Most was my uh, broadcasting school teacher. The uh, Bulls and the Pistons of the Bulls and the Lakers were in the finals. And, and beer. And, uh, right. and, and everybody's asking, Johnny, what do you think? You know, he couldn't carry – outside of teaching, he really was losing his mind. But when he mm-hmm. started talking basketball and he said they got to switch up Magic and Jordan, they got to switch that around, as soon as they did that, the Bulls won their title. I was like, that guy – I mean, that that's that, that's Vince McMahon stuff. Vince might not have right. everything under control in his personal life, but boom, when it comes to that, he's all – you know, he, he, he yep. knows – up. If I were to see Grout Wrestling Advice, I would still call Vince McMahon and be like, look, right. and by it. all accounts, even if somebody had wronged him in the past, yeah, if he thought that he could make money with that person in the future, he'd yep. bring him back. Billy Hogan. Graham. Billy Graham. Ho- Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> Warrior. Ultimate Warrior. What was right. that all about? Right. Yeah, these are the guys, even Bruno kind of cro- they crossed paths in the early 90s, and he's still winning the Hall of Fame. I mean, Vince right. knows, you know. Right. Take away right. all the side bullshit. He knows. He knows right. what to do in this business. And right. I, I still right. wouldn't put it past Triple H and all them if he's somehow on the other, you know, on the end of the phone on right. certain nights when they have a question on what to do, you know, and they looking for yeah. an opinion. So you never know. You I'll know? tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what though, too. Like, you know, Benny said, well, hopefully in the next few years, you know, a lot of wrongs will be righted. Here's my concern about that. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the, uh, you know, uh, the I hate Vince McMahon cult people. <laughs> I, and you know, who I'm talking at right now. Okay. <laughs> Mr. You know, uh, uh, you know, IP freely Cole. Okay. <laughs> All right. Father. You know, using the word cult with people who like have the nerve to like, you know, enjoy what Vince has given to us as fans. Fuck you. All right. You know, uh, I'm very concerned. These same people who are now rooting for triple H. Cause I am going somewhere with this, Benny. The people who are rooting for Triple H to be removed because he must have known everything and all this other sh- horse shit, you know, that we don't have any proof of. Yeah. I'm very worried because if Triple H is removed or if Triple H is they decide to get away from tri- yeah. who is going to make with this with the new ownership and stuff, who is going to make those educated wrestling, you know, ideas to go back and put an Ivan Koloff in? Because I know oh, Triple yeah, H no. probably feels that Ivan Koloff should be a Triple H is no fool. Triple H loves wrestling. He was a wrestler. It's going to be okay. consulting guys in suits now. That's what's going to happen. I'm very worried about that. So I'm I'm scared that you know you got to be careful sometimes because I mean you don't know who's going to be running it, and it's not it's not something I'm really looking forward to. As long as Triple H is there, I feel comfortable. Yeah. 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 For and, sure. I, and, I, and I think a lot of the wrestling, the wrestlers or the sports entertainers, whatever you want to call them now, I, I feel the same way. He's right. he's that guy that, okay, at least he's still here. At least right. we have a shot. You yeah. know, there's some right. legitimacy. You know, right. it's good for the confidence. Right. But you're right. You're right, Jimmy. This does pose a question. What if the day after WrestleMania, the axe falls on everything? Right. You know what I mean? Like, boom. No, right. Anybody affiliated with Instagram, man, you're out. Right to the point where right. they freaking close up the right. office in Denver, Connecticut, and they put everything under the UFC umbrella or something. I don't know. I'm just and, saying, though. Know, yeah, I am worried and, about that. And, and unlike the frat boys that run, you know, AEW, okay, because oh. they because they do. Triple H does not get enough respect as a businessman. Who do you think he learned from? Of course, of course. All right, you know. So I, I want Triple H to stay to stay right where he is for the good of the sport. I yep. want him to stay right where he is. Be careful what you ask for, folks, because you yep. just might get it. Yeah, I agree. Know? I agree. And I you know, it, real, I real quick, you know, on, on the topic of that other guy who's got three eyes uh, after his name, who's uh, always, uh, you know, on a jihad and who always speaks a lot but says really very little. Yeah. Uh, for the first time ever in all my years, this guy was uh, very critical of Vince Sr., and that just blew my mind because I've never heard an account from anyone right. who had anything remotely negative to say about Vince McMahon Sr.'s character, his right. operations, uh, right. and, and anything that happened in that era. So I was really kind of shocked by what this guy was saying, you know, right. and 
again, alluding to a lot of things, but never saying anything. Wasn't that you know? when you go back to the Vince Senior days and all that stuff? I'm talking obviously pre '82 and all that stuff. Sure. When they, when I was a fan there. then. I, yeah, I went yeah. to shows then when it was Vince Senior sure, in man. charge. It was very. It was more business like though back then too. Right. You know, it wasn't entertaining and all. I right. get all that stuff, but on the inside. Everything was done either with a handshake or, or a contract or goodwill. Right. It was mm-hmm. like, and nobody crossed mm-hmm. anybody. And if they did, you right. were blacklisted. You were blackballed, you know? Right. So, yeah, I've heard, I have heard stories that Vince Sr. could be that guy at times where if you screw me, you know, we're done. I'm never going to talk to you ever again. He was, a, he was a business But that's good business. Yeah, that's right. good business. But some people think that, oh, he wasn't a fair player or, you know, that's this, you know. People separate, you know, people have a hard time separating personal and business. You know, yeah. I love you, but it's business. You know what I mean? Right. So right. And he's the one that came up with the Andre the Giant uh, needs to be undefeated gimmick. You know, right. Andre was getting clubbed in Canada and all that stuff. And he was getting pinned and body slammed. And Vince Senior is like, not when he comes here, he's going to be undefeated. And he made every territory that booked Andre after that. I think it was after 74. Um, everybody right. that booked Andre, he does not lose. He does not get pinned. Well, he yeah, does not lose. if like, it were a shoot, that would be the case anyway. Right, so, right, right. You know. said, but I'll tell was, you, no, nobody on this panel knows better than Benny. So, Benny, you tell us during the years because because you 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 saw things that would, we weren't even watching wrestling yet, and you were probably watching for a decade at least. Sure, yeah, we, we had yeah. a chance to probably. So, I mean, were you ever bored with Vince McMahon Senior's presentations? I mean, some of the crap I hear about, you know, Vince McMahon Sr. played it too safe, guys held the belt too long. As a fan, how did you remember the WWW? I I can, you know, there's probably a hundred adjectives that describe how I felt as a fan growing up on Long Island in in the 70s and even the Mm -hmm. late 60s. Mm -hmm. Bored would never come into the conversation, ever. Right, right. Ever. Right, right. You you witnessed you witnessed uh, Bruno San Martino during all those years. Did, did you ever root for someone else to take the belt off him, or was Hell it no. just as every every month though? It seemed like a legitimate challenger was being presented, right? You know, it was such a simple formula, you know. You, right. you bring in a new heel from one of the other territories, you know, yeah. and then they, they you know then he'd come in and he'd squash maybe Arnold Scullin. Uh, you know, then maybe right. work up to Dominic Danucci, you know, beat him, right. you know, mm-hmm. it, it, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. attack Bruno during an interview. Next thing you know, they're, they're selling out the garden. And if it was right. a really good match, they, they, you know, they do it maybe one or two more times. And they mm-hmm. did that for like 20 years between Bruno, Pedro yeah. and Backlund. It was yeah. all the same formula, but you know what? It worked. Right. Now, here, here's one, uh, Joe, I got to throw this one out there. Tell me what you sure. guys think about this. Okay. After Vince McMahon... I believe that the most ingenious man behind the scenes in the history of this business is Pat Patterson. Is there something wrong with that? Um, no, that's a, that's a good analogy. I, I I know what you're saying. I I mean, to what degree? As a as a guy behind the scenes, or? as a as a, as a as a creative guy. Oh yeah, definitely. That, that always knew, always seemed to know how to push the right buttons. Never mind the fact that as a wrestler, I think that that's completely swept under the carpet at this point. You know, I'm, I mean, Pat Patterson, the wrestler, sold yeah. out. You know, fought back one four times four in times a row as a heel. Time. He, um, you know what he, I mean. He, but he also had that nationwide experience wrestling in the AWA, NWA, and all right. that stuff, and you know, right. international. So, right. to, you know, yeah, to, you know, you want to throw a storyline at him, and uh, you know, he'll spruce right. it up. Sure, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a good. Right. I, I would agree uh, with that. I, I, I honestly yeah. feel like Pat Patterson was a finer mind than Vern Gagne. Or I'm sorry if that drives people crazy, but that's how I feel about that. Pat, Pat Gagne, Patterson. That is way I don't think it's even close. I mean, yeah. I think Pat Patterson was way more creative. Thank you. Than Thank you. I feel better. I, for a second there, I thought I was like, you know, about to make myself look like an idiot, but I don't think so. I really do think Pat Patterson was that great of a mind, and Vince valued him immeasurably. You Wouldn't know, be no, there'd, you know be, there'd be no Royal Rumble without Pat Patterson. It was right. two two, two years thing. after that uh, uh, Bachwinkle Hogan screw job. You know where they were wrestling on the on the day of WrestleMania? They were res- the AWA. Was wrestling at Boylan Catholic High School. Sure. There you go. Unless we not that, forget right? that yeah. Vern Gagne was very concerned that the name, the Midnight Rockers, would conjure images of old men in rocking chairs and didn't want to go with that name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but in the meantime, he, won, he wins the title for himself when he's 55. That's, yeah. a, that's okay. Yeah. Right. 
But, right, that, but that's Earth and, Benny. And, he looks sixty-five, though. Right, that's, and, that's and called and limited respect, vision. That's called and limited as much respect vision. Respect as I have for Nick Bockwinkle, oh, even though I know Mike can, Mike cannot stand Nick Bockwinkle. But <laughs> I mean, what are you doing having a forty-five-year-old Nick Bockwinkle holding the belt while you have Hulk Hogan in your territory? Oh, are you great. complete? Are you complete moron? Bockwinkle was almost forty-nine when they had that match in nineteen eighty-three. Yeah, Hogan was go, like right. twenty-nine. There you I go, did, right there. To to watch that match, I, I watch that on occasionally on YouTube and watch the crowd right. and uh, and Gene Oakland telling everybody to calm down because they're throwing everything in the ring and Hogan's right. got to calm down. You get a show that hot, you mm -hmm. could ride that for years. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. dropped that, was, that uh, ball. To me, that was the so single mad. most uh, right. lousiest booking decision ever. It made no sense. Right. It made absolute I'll, zero I'll, sense. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something else too. Why is why is A E why does AEW get the reputation from the fans that this is what's right about wrestling? You do realize Samoa Joe just beat Wardlow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're gonna tell me with a straight face that you that's the up. future. This is the future. This is where this company is the future, and we we're all about you know giving fresh faces a chance and all the you us you guys are so full of shit out yeah. there. No. You I know, mean, you know, it's five know. years ago when they started, they were like that. They they could have done something. Then the right. COVID years hit and all that stuff. But ever since, right. I don't know what it is with Tony Khan. I think he's the biggest mark out there. I think he's he more of a fan than he is a booker because you bring back CM Punk and you got the crowd, you got everybody. And right. to allow a situation, whatever it was backstage, I'm here, it was close to now nothing uh, that happened backstage between him and Jack Perry. Um, and then you lose the guy to the WWE a year later. It's like, right. this, this, what's he going to, this is why I'm worried about Mercedes Monet. You know, is this the height of her career now? The big return in Boston? What happens now? What is next? Yeah. She's battled half the women in the, in the division. They're all ex WWE wrestlers. They're all, you know, they all have, have crossed each other's paths at one point or another, but let's take out a four and a half million dollar girl. You just signed. Who's that by the way, 32 years old at the prime of her career. And let's put her in the ring against a girl named Willow. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, yep. really, if, if you really paid her that kind of money, I would have taken Tony storm. I would have took that title. And then I would have demanded a match that night and won the title and let the Mercedes Monet ever really, really begin. Absolutely then, right. You know what I mean? Now you're going to have this, you're going to be, and I'm worried if she's even got, if she's healthy enough to be in the ring, she hasn't had a match in so long. I know she's right. worked out and all that stuff. Right. You know, the last time she had a match, injuries, she, broke, she broke her ankle. So, yep. Yep. you know, she's, where are we there? Where are we there? You know, I mean, she's dangerous. Quite honestly, she's dangerous. She'll either hurt herself. Like I think Benny said it a couple of shows. She either ago, hurts whatever. somebody or hurts herself. Yeah. Yep. Right. Exactly. And you know what? You know what? You know what her greatest moment was? And I hope I've got this right. If I don't, I should smoke more weed. But, um, <laughs> Do that anyway. I, 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 believe, I believe her greatest moment. I, I'm going back years now, but it was when they were actually really known as the Four Horse Women when yes. Bailey yep. and Sasha Banks fought at yep. the Barclays Center yep. in NXT. That do I have this right? That yep. that that match was like you know what women can wrestle, baby. That was, that was the night before WrestleMania, right? That the night before WrestleMania. Yeah, I believe so. The yeah, takeover, the, like in the early days of the takeover. Yeah, those are the matches why I started watching NXT. Yeah. Right. Those are the matches right there. When I saw them wrestle like that, I'm like, okay, they're on to something now. And then, right. you know, they, you, know, um, you know, she mentioned the women's evolution on AEW the night. I'm like, yeah, you were part of that in the WWE, not right. in AEW. Right. Don't be going down that path. You know, right. Stephanie McMahon right. called you out there and said, welcome to the new women's evolution. You know, right. they were part of it. And, and now you just ruined it. You, you know, right. And, and, and while you're saying that, there are three current WWE women up in the rafters watching you and it's like right. this makes no sense like and you want to you want to know what it's funny like you know if somebody even s types a simple like you know knock on on us as people we you know it, 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 in my case something you know especially in the old days now not so much but <laughs> you know it bothers you and you get all crazy about it and you get you know you you get thrown off your uh your juju or whatever do you realize how many times Vince McMahon has had to turn on a television set and watch people that he made famous and wealthy yeah. fuck yeah. him? Yeah. Do you have yeah. any idea how many times did it did it ever make him waver from his game plans? Did it ever make him take his eye off the road? No. The, what an incredible like, you know, balls of steel. What a genetic jackhammer. Yes. I mean, yeah. my god, how do you have that kind of makeup where you can 
Make what do so you many people do? wealthy and there's no gratitude. There's none. I know. It's horrible. It's it's, it's horrible. It's That's, to me, it's fucked up. But, but as I say, this too shall pass, and he'll probably be in the Hall of Fame in the next five years, Vince McMahon. You never know. My uh, God. If there's I'd ever like a say he, I'd like to say he camera. built I'd like to say he built the Hall of Fame, but there's no building. Yeah. <laughs> Well, wait, isn't there a pro wrestling Hall of Fame? There's somewhere, right? They just reopened it. Yeah. I want oh, to there's say one right. upstate New York. Yeah, they okay. relocated there, right? It used to be in the Midwest, and they yeah, moved over the there. International like Professional Wrestling yeah. Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. That's the closest you can get to it. So, I mean, yeah. Well, well, let me guess. People like Meltzer are in that one, or something, or what? <laughs> no, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of legitimate characters in that. Okay, all right. I want to, I want to say Cowboy <laughs> Cowboy Bill Watts has something to do with that. Okay, I think all right. So. I think he has something to do with that, from what I remember. I had a friend. Yeah, in, ironically, I had a friend in high school who relocated somewhere where the Hall of Fame is now, and she went to it and she was sending me pictures one year. Well, it was upstate New York. They relocated it to uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. There you go. She I think that one, closed, of Texas. that one closed down. Yep. And okay. they reopened one upstate New York. Yeah, it was going back and forth. They actually built a building in the Texas one. They, she was showing pictures, she did a video. They had everything at Buddy Rogers, robes, things like that. They had all sorts of good stuff there. But I'm going nice. back almost ten years when I when I. I mean, how much? Nice. Stuff, I mean, how much memorabilia could you put in a WWE Hall of Fame? It's gonna be mind boggling. Oh my god! Didn't the WWE Network have a show on that? Like all the all the props they've had and stories. Mister Mister Fuji salt packets. Oh yeah, yeah I love it. <laughs> it was actually baby powder, I think. Oh man. You I ruined it for me, Phil. I thought it was Phil. I thought Jimmy, it was real, Jimmy, it was, Mor Phil. it was Morton Salt, okay? It was Morton Salt. When he, when salt. he, threw, the, when he saw, we threw the salt in Rick Martell's eyes, my eyes were watering that. Oh, time. absolutely. Oh, the power of wait, suggestion, wait, 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 huh? wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. They were? Yeah, I didn't like that. Wow. I Joe, was you very did, upset. Joe, did, did you ever become fond of heels? Because that's the that's that seems oh, like, you know, oh. did I, you? Magnificent Morocco was my favorite oh, wrestler. Oh, oh, wow. Does Mike know this? Mike loved Morocco uh, yeah. until he acted like a douchebag and wouldn't come on the show. Oh, mm -hmm. I had a chance to interview him a few years yeah. ago when he was in Hawaii. Um, okay. But, you know, I told this story a million times. I was such an overzealous fan that I, uh, 1981, December yes. 5th, 1981, <laughs> steel cage match, him and Bob Backlund. Backlund wins it, you know, Backlund wins. He's going back and all of a sudden yeah. Morocco's coming out of the ring. And I run over to the yeah. entranceway and I took my hand and yeah. I swiped his forehead and got all his blood on my hands. Nice. And I nice. didn't wash my hand for the entire weekend. I went to school with Don Morocco's blood on my hands. Nice. I, I, I got to get, I got to, I got to get this in too. But, uh, Morocco was going to come on the show. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like Mike, Mike had a nice, you know, conversation with him and everything. And then, and he was going to come on. And then all of a sudden Mike gets a phone call and he goes, Morocco goes to him. Are you connected to Eric Sims? Do you know Eric Sims? Do you do bookings with Eric Sims? And he was like, yeah. He was like, interview canceled. Click. <laughs> wow. wow. Not a fan of Eric Sims, I guess. I guess you know? not. <laughs> Funny Guilty shit. Guilty by association. My God, no. Yeah, Morocco well, was, no. He was a tough interview only because, you know, he's up there in age now and, you know, the mind's not working very well. But uh, he, he had some good memories. Um, okay. but, you know, he was, his wife had a lot to do with me getting in touch with him and talking to him and guiding him through his promos and all that stuff. So, um, right. you know, that's what happens when these guys get up there in age, you know, it catches up to them, but it was a good interview, a lot of nostalgia, a lot of his training, a lot of, you know, a lot of the good stuff, him and Snooker, you know, uh, Tito Santana, all those matches, Pedro, it was a great interview. I loved it. it was, you got uh, those right. shoulders from surfing, from swimming yeah, out, you know, a, that's how you built surfer. those shoulders. Yep. He was a great yeah, surfer. And he, and he ate a hero in the middle of a match, which is the greatest yeah. thing I've ever seen. The best thing is, he eats him on was the surfboard, good. too. He's got a big meatball grinder. We call him grinders up here. Grinders. The meatball grinder. <laughs> oh, he's, he's surfing a wave. It's great. Those, I can those go were the, for a friggin' grinder right now. I missed. Yeah, yeah. Those oh, were God. the day. Those were the days when when you held an intercontinental title that you were you were basically yeah. world championship material. Yeah. yeah, you were the heel you know, mostly. mostly the heel. Yeah, they were the stepping stone to Backlund's belt. Yeah. That's what the, what right. the intercontinental title but, was. Unless Pedro be, had it, you know. But yep. Um, yep. But Morocco. Oh, I, hate, I hated Pedro. Oh my God! Oh, I, I, I never understood that. I what, hated as, Pedro. As uh, in the title? 
as yeah, I, no, I just hated Pedro. Period. I, I mean, do I think he was great? Do I, you know, he's no, a Hall of Famer and all that stuff. But I couldn't stand Pedro. Oh my so God, he got in Morocco's way, then he got in Valentine's way. I couldn't stand Pedro oh, Morales. I was. I like Pedro. Pedro. He was up there in age at that time, right? Because God, he was world champion like ten years pro- before yeah. that. Yeah, but you still he believe that could, that you still believe he could kick the crap out of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was still his arms were huge. He was a big you, boy. You, Pedro you know Morales. who was old to me that even when I was younger back then was uh, Chief J Strongbow. Because uh, he, he was old. Oh, he, he was, was old, old then. Right? He was. I'm like, oh, what's he like? Fifty? And they're like, yeah, he is old. <laughs> I'm like, wow, he's still wrestling, and he's a tag team champion. Let me old, let I'm me like, tell you, Chief J Strongbow was built like a baked potato. <laughs> Joey Scappa, <laughs> Joey Scappa, lo- loaded baked potato. He had the personality right. of one too. Oh, geez. right. The, the greatest, the, the greatest Indian wrestler that ever ever lived and ever competed is 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 the guy right behind. Right yeah, behind oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Right yeah. Into that. It, it's not even close. No, what an athlete! Close. What a what a you know. And I, yeah. but I will tell you this much from from what I know, and I I've been fortunate enough to know plenty about Wahoo. Wahoo did not play games with 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 nonsense from bookers. Okay, yeah, that's not? why that's why Wahoo was never. You know, an intercontinental champion or a world yeah. heavyweight champion for Vince and stuff. Yeah. He didn't take shit from the bookers because the bookers, whether it was Vince or whether it was all the other guys in all the other territories, were all out for themselves. And if Wahoo yeah. felt that he was being, you know, worked by the own the sure. very people sure. he was working for, fuck you. Yeah. See you yeah. later. Yeah. You know, I agree. I, I, I tell you agree. what, though, something that I wish would have happened that never happened was. Bring Wahoo to, to New York, right? Team mm-hmm. him up with Strongbow and then have okay. Wahoo turn on him. Oh, oh my God. Oh, there you go. But, yeah, okay, but here's something I also know. Wahoo did not enjoy being a heel. He did not want to be a heel. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, no, he didn't enjoy that. Wow. He, he he loved the fans, and he loved what he did, and he appreciated the fans. Yeah, and you couldn't have Strongbow he, turn on Wahoo. No. Uh, no. I don't no. Think have that happen. You know, no. but if they had if they had been a face tag team, oh, oh been, been, you you saw what happened with Jay and Jules. Jay yeah. and Jules did well. You yeah. know, if you if you put the two most famous Indian wrestlers together, even though one of them was a freaking Italian, you yeah. know what I'm There's saying? New Jersey. If, yeah. if you right, if you would put those two together, forget about it. The fans yeah. would have gone. Would have been. It would have been a love affair. I absolutely agree. Been. Absolutely yeah. agree. Yep. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this thing up. We've been on the air for quite some time. I want to thank everybody for joining me, Phil, the player, and, of course, our special guest, Jimmy the Pharaoh. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank everybody in the chat. They're still yapping away. We had a lot of of people chiming back and forth. Great. Oh, guess who's in the chat but not on the show tonight? What's that? Who? He's ESO. He's uh, he's chatting away. What's with that? Yeah, what's up with no, that? Man? To, look, well, look, look, listen. First of all, let's not give our special referee any heat, okay? <laughs> Bruce, Bruce is I'm a, I'm the number one backer of Bruce. Bruce basically was the guy who sent me the link to get on the show tonight. Oh, you should you have know? asked me. I would have given you. He's uh, the magic man. I, I was scrambling to get this number out, and I'm not going to announce it on the air. I wanted to make sure that this is your your, your number. So you know what? What I'm going to do is is when we I'll get give it away. The air, <laughs> would, would you stop it? It'll get trolled uncontrollably. <laughs> No, when we get off the air, I'm going to send a text to this number and just put Pharaoh, okay? okay. okay. If it really is you, I'm going to know. You know what okay. I mean? If it's not, somebody's going to write back, and who the fuck is Pharaoh? Yeah, so I'm not getting Pharaoh. Unless anyway. they're also watching this show. Yeah, right. There you, there you oh, go. shit. I mean, well, Betty, wait a minute. What number did you send me? <laughs> oh, wait, I'll show it to you. It's probably a massage parlor. You know, and you, Betty. Oh, that unbelievable. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you're uh, heading to the big event tomorrow, right? Heading up to the big event in New York. If I can get my butt up early, yep. <laughs> you better get Phil, some shut eye, right? Yeah, you better. Phil, get I don't want to put pressure on you, but you gotta go, bro. Yeah, you gotta you got, go. You, I, I need, I need you to go, Phil. Please. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, you only have one goal. You got to get sky blue or somebody to say, "Hey, Joe, what a no, day!" I'm gonna, I'm gonna Venmo Phil uh, five hundred and forty nine dollars. So he can get me a Stacy Keebler. Oh, five ninety nine, ninety nine. <laughs> Ridiculous. Unbelievable. Is she really charging that tomorrow? Is it five hundred tomorrow? She's got a lot yeah. of audacity, man. A Andy lot of Rose leg, but a lot of Andy audacity. Rose is there. What is she going to charge? I mean, great. She had some guy pay fifty five grand for all her OnlyFans stuff and whatever. Uh, you know, there's some sick people out there. 
There, there are people. There are people starving to death, and yeah. you know, and people are throwing money at these. It's just it boggles yep. the mind. My mother yep. used to say that there are people starving in China. In yeah. China, you forgot to fill in the rest of it. I mean, we or, or, or as weird Al Yankovic there. would say, "Don't you know there are people starving in Japan? So eat it, just <laughs> right. eat it." Right. Oh, right. That, reminds me, that reminds me of Sam Kinison. You know why there's people dying in Africa? It's sand. You can't grow nothing on sand. <laughs> <laughs> so eat your squash or else. Oh, there you no. Go. Tell you what, there we'll you get go. a big boat. We'll send you to someplace that can grow food. <laughs> you know? Unbelievable. All right, I want to thank you guys once again for joining us here on Wrestling Remembered. Don't forget, Marty and the Farrow. I do believe uh, Andre the Giant's daughter is on tomorrow night, correct? Correct. correct. And I'm sure we're going to get correct. some uh, good sound bites from the big convention in New York coming up tomorrow. That's a huge one. It's called the big event. You know, here I am. I was messaging uh, Mike, and I'm like, what's the name of the big event up there? And he's like, the big event. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's the big event. The big event. So there, there you, you go. go. So, all right, folks, guys. That's going to do it for us. Uh, Betty, you got True Crime Monday, correct? Menendez Sam Shepard, brothers. all that stuff? Yes. Right? We're going to be coming. Is it Sam Shepard? No. No, Menendez. It's Menendez brothers. Menendez brothers. I'm all over the place. I'm doing too many shows. My God. All right, guys. Jimmy, have a good one. Be safe. Phil, happy, happy trails to you tomorrow in New York. We'll see you somewhere down the road. Good luck, Joe. Have all a right. good weekend. Benny. All right. Technicolor, baby. Love it. Yeah. All right. What Later, a day. Fellas. We're out of here. What a day. <laughs> Bye, Jimmy.